<laughs> to you. I a couple years ago, lateness was something that I worked. That was my like New Year's resolution was to be less yeah. late. I and I in a have house. made a lot of progress. <laughs> my house would like better to be five hours early than one minute late. So like that's well ingrained. In my my husband does not help with this uh -oh. New Year's resolution whatsoever. Uh -oh. The time dilation. He like just thinks he's like, oh yeah, we'll just leave. I'm like, we have two small children. You never just leave. <laughs> he's like, okay, I'll meet you there. <laughs> yeah, that honestly, we do that a lot. <laughs> I'm like, we gotta go. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'm gonna realize that we're, we're gonna be live soon. He told us. He was like, uh, he'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah just um, okay. I just need to, uh, I just need to get ready. I'm like, please, please. Go ahead. Okay, so, uh, ready to, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but we are going to go. get going. Um, it is 9.01, and we'll call to order for the uh, special meeting of the Board of Education of Saturday, February 18th, 2023. Um, and we uh, acknowledge the tra traditional, ancestral, unceded territory of the Chumash, Tongva, Fernandeño, Tataviam, and First Nations on which we are learning, educating, and living. Uh, living. I'm just throwing in extra syllables everywhere no, today. I like it. it's fine. Thank you. It's fine. Um, Morning, Steve. It's fun. I'm just. It's not <laughs> enough coffee has been ingested, so we're working on it. Um, at this time, and then we'll do uh, the Pledge of Allegiance real quick. Stand. <laughs> <laughs> Identify where the flag is. Place your right hand over your heart. Ready to begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, we uh, will take the roll at this time. Dr. Hill, if you could take the roll for us. Member Ponser Kamkar? Present. Member Tabit? Present. Member Agakanian? Absent. He's on his way. He just notified me. Uh, Vice President Weisberg? Present. President Ferguson? Present. Okay, so we do have uh, four out of five members with one on the way, so we do have a quorum to proceed with the rest of the meeting. Um, we um, will move to item two. A, which is um, to address the board. This will be our only period of public comment. Um, and would anybody like to address the board? I have no cards. Oh, I have one <laughs> card. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. From Schlossman. The last meeting, you know, in 30 years of going to these meetings, I've never stood up in rows and called for a point of order. Point of order by definition is a query in a formal debate or, or meeting as to whether correct procedure is being followed. A point of order is not an outburst, Mr. President. And then you went on to make the comment, there is no such thing as a point of order. I beg to differ. Regarding 3A on the agenda, refreshing the brand can only guess that this is about this symbol with three characters on it that makes you uncomfortable. I think your woke agenda is inappropriate, and I think it's a bad use of funds to spend money to issue new cards and new letterhead and new signage at this time when we're calling for more money, when we're out of money, and you're getting ready to ask for a bond. That's what that $521,000 was all about. You hired somebody who was a bad salesman and he couldn't sell it twice, talking about the parcel tax. And now we got Mr. Cantwell, who's a much better salesman. You're going about this all wrong. You're punishing dissenters like me, I'm talking about 3B, changing around people can, the way people can speak and address you. You're doing it wrong. And to our newest member, I'm sorry, I don't I drink my glasses. Our newest member, I, you've hit the ground crawling. I want you to speak up for me. I don't want you to go along with these guys who are going to change 
the order of, of how things, of how people can come and address you. You should be encouraging participation. When I ask a question, you should go out of your way to answer it. And an example is that of that is, I talked about a cost benefit analysis of solar because I've heard you talk about solar, Mr. President. I've heard you talk about wanting to go to electric cars. I know the answer to these questions. I know that it's 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag. And I know it's not cost efficient, but the superintendent gives me the bums rush when I ask for the cost benefit analysis. He says, well, you know, uh, you can call tomorrow and, and you can, you know, public record, that type of thing. No, I should have got an email from the superintendent with that information in it. And all of you should have got that information so you can make an intelligent decision instead of spending feel good money. And if you go for a school bond, you can bet I'm going to be talking about this type of thing because it's that's the type of thing you're going to want to include. You're already talking about it with the DWP. You're researching it. Why shouldn't we know if that works or not? If, if we're getting our money's worth when you spend money for it. Now, I've been marginalized, ignored, trying to silence me, which is what this meeting here is about. If you're gonna go from five minutes to three minutes or even one minute, whatever it is, it's your meeting, I'll respect it, but it's the wrong thing to do. You should be encouraging participation in these meetings. You can't have everybody coming up and giving you a pat in the back. You know, I question a lot of things and they're good questions and they deserve answers. If a, if a person who stands under the rainbow flag came here, you'd do somersaults for that person to make things right. If a person of color came here, you do somersaults to make things right for that person. And you should, and we're all, all of us have colors, all of us are the same, but you don't treat it, treat us that way. The people who come here and, uh, you know, uh, complain like me, marginalized and it's not right. We should be treated the same as everybody else and we should have answers to our questions. And there are always legitimate questions. You're spending, you're spending money hand over fist and you're going to the property owners again. You should be ashamed of yourself. It, there should be complete transparency, and there's not. There's not transparency in this district. There's a leadership problem in this district. There's a common sense problem in this district. And I'll keep coming back and saying these types of things because I want more accountability. I want good leadership. And one other, one last thing on here. You were, I'm grateful that you're going to be recognizing people. And I've been calling for that, calling for that for years. And if I can be of any service, I'm glad to do it. If you need me to come down here a couple of hours a week or whatever and coordinate, make up the certificates, arrange things, I'm happy to do it. Now, I know you'll never call me because I'm not liked. Big surprise. But that doesn't change the fact that I have a long history of volunteerism for this. Mr. Slosh, may your five, month, fin Thank five you, minutes sir. is up. Thank you very much. Any other speakers? Seeing none, uh, we will go to superintendent's comments and responses. No response. Okay. Uh, board members' comments and responses. Looking to my left, looking to my right. Um, uh, quickly responding, uh, one, uh, point of orders are recognized usually uh, in Robert's Rules of Order. I'm aware of, uh, you know, points of order, and I'm aware of Robert's Rules of Order. If you look at our board bylaws, Robert's Rules of Order are not recognized uh, as a means by which the board does its business. Therefore, points of order don't exist in the Board of Education. Second, if they did exist, they would be four members uh, of the body uh, because those are procedures for a body to interact and to pass business. Um, we have done, I think, a great deal of work to, welcome Dr. Agakhani, um, to respect public comment uh, and, and change up public comment in a way to try and include and increase participation. Um, I will say, and I say this with all due respect, us reviewing our agenda and how it's laid out is not about you. 
it is fundamentally about one, uh, I have been speaking with Dr. Weisberg as a member of the executive committee who's responsible for putting together these agendas. And I want to make sure, as I said, when I ran for president, uh, that everybody has equal access to these agendas, that everybody can participate fully. And that does not occur at 1130 at night when everybody has been uh, working a full day. Um, so what I am hoping to do is facilitate a conversation to ensure our agendas and our board is aligned on what we expect to see from our agendas, what outcomes we hope to derive from our agendas. You talk about a lack of accountability. You talk about a lack of transparency. Here we are having that. And, and further, putting in systems in place so that way that accountability, that learning, all the things that we hope to achieve from our meetings and not just rubber stamp, as you have previously also accused us of, uh, that instead these are productive meetings that move the district forward by its elected policy leaders. So while we will do all we can uh, to, to make sure public participation is happening, uh, we, are, we have the right uh, to structure our agenda in a way that ensures, uh, one, that our business can be done in a way that, you know, frankly, it deserves. Uh, and also so that we can ensure public participation. Um, your commentary around me jumping if there were a rainbow flag here. Uh, first, I seldom jump. Um, so um, so that is first. Second, um, what symbols you deploy or what symbols anybody else deploys um, in, in their commentary is their right. It is when it is hate-filled that I do not like to respond to it. It is when it is ignorant that I feel the need to respond to it. Uh, when somebody is choosing to express who they are authentically, again, I have no problem with that, even if I believe what they're saying makes them kind of a jerk. Um, but what I don't respect is when others use the time to create unsafe spaces for people to participate by saying commentary that they know will be triggering. You deploying the use of a rainbow flag in your commentary was meant to trigger this response. Congratulations, you got it. So as, as you giving an example that I'm sensitive to one community over another, I've been representing a lot, of, a lot more heterosexuals than LGBT folks in my time on this board. In fact, statistically, that's almost all I represent. Mm -hmm. So um, that's all I'm gonna say. Uh, I, I, re I respect your right to come down here. I respect your right to contribute. Um, it does not guarantee that you will be heard. Uh, it does not guarantee that you will, it will guarantee that you'll be heard. It doesn't, it doesn't guarantee that we'll be listening to you. And if, and if you want to do that, you've run for office before in this town. And there's an opportunity for you to run every two years. Um, and now districts potentially for you to run in. So again, there is a certain amount of, uh, once you are elected, yeah, you're considered, your opinion is considered differently. Why? Because the community has elevated you to that role. Um, that's not the case with submitting a public comment card in every moment. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thanks for coming down today. It's a Saturday. So this is your second redo of the week. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll invite you down to do certs, but if there's a moment where I can do that, then we may figure it out. Um, so I don't know. Um, but thank you for that. And thank you for the offer. With that, we will move to any other comments. Just checking. Nope. Yeah. Great. Study session. Update on board branding. Um, so um, I'm going to start this off. So if if that's okay. Um, so there are kind of a number of things that represent the board. It's like you can't see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there are a number of things that, that represent the board that have just not received attention. And it's not due to, uh, well, again, it's not the priority. How we, you know, it's just not the priority. So um, one of those things, for instance, is the montage that begins. <laughs> Sorry. At the beginning of the meeting, so I can confirm, uh, being a student board member in 2005, <laughs> that that was the same montage used in 2005. So it's old. Nice. Um, I think just say, looking at it can. Yes. yes. So those children are in their 30s. Absolutely, yes. they use the video to play 80s to make sure. Um. Yes, if not later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it could be footage from the 90s. Like, yeah. It, um, so the idea is one to get a nod to if there is capacity for our uh, media production classes at mm -hmm. the secondary schools. You're gonna love me. <laughs> I do love you most. More. Of you. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I I thought uh, looking at the agenda, I took some time and 
actually spoke with the video production teacher, Burbank Kai, and she would love to put together a new montage for us. Yay. That's amazing. Okay. So if that's where you were going. I, yes. I, no. I'm, I'm asking for permission. Um, and so that's great. And I love hearing that. And what's really jumping up. No, like this is why, like we're trying, great. There's, there's a study session. this is the whole <laughs> point for us to be able to do this, stuff, uh, these, have these conversations. So what's great is that we were speaking with one of the camera operators mm -hmm. at channel T at TV six uh, who was at the board meeting and they too are willing to work with the students once they produce something yeah. uh, and cool. then bring them in and then actually show them how they can put it together. And so awesome. if we can make that, it, so if everybody's fine with it, we'll update the montage. So just, and then if staff can work with, um, is it Miss Winnie? Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, Ms. Wynn is appropriate. Yeah, Miss Wynn and uh, and TV Six and a I, I really what a great opportunity for those kids. Well, yeah. that's well, and remember one of the programs I, I uh, helped start was Teens in Action, and Teens in Action Media Communications team was a group that actually won a ton of Emmys um, <laughs> as as for a Channel Six show, and they would work with Channel Six producers and put on different shows on teen issues. And so it's a really incredible experience to work with those professionals and yeah. they're winning golden mic awards kind of right and left. They're mm -hmm. real, they're known within their industry. So yeah, I agree. It's a, it's, it's a good mentoring opportunity. It's a good kind of CTE opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, so that's, yeah. Montage, montage. done. Mm -hmm. um, the second is like on our website. So we have the board members listed. Uh, we have our photos. Mm -hmm. um, the idea is putting a bio in yeah. them. Sure. Okay. Um, that that's the second. Uh, are our that's... emails already They're next to our names? They are right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. So those were the two big ones. Um, this is I, very contentious. It's very contentious. Um, I would like to remain a woman of mystery. <laughs> I don't know if I'm. And if there's a what a series late. of ellipses and yeah. <laughs> if there are any other kind of like again how the board is listed how the board is accessible any of those kinds of changes mm -hmm. open for that but those were the two that i really just wanted to make sure that we could yeah send me a group photo yes so we'll do cool. a group photo at the dais yeah. at the council dais i do think though and i mentioned too um, it every year once yeah. well i mentioned I'm um, there were things i'm still depressed Mr. Benson, <laughs> when he came in, that we could get, we could, we should work, begin the habit of doing what council does, ideally, which is whenever there's the reorganization meeting, is doing our pictures, because that's what they do. They do their group picture, they do their individual pictures that night, and yeah. just be, <clears throat> just get it done, be done with it, yeah. not have to, like, worry about it. Okay, so. They also have a different cut, like, because our that meeting went until I think like 11 or something, right? They have like a very ceremonial reading. They do. They have a meeting that's just, just that meeting. Yeah. But maybe it's but, one that we come a little bit early yeah, again. Yeah. I, I think I do agree with the president. I think we should do this on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. I mean, besides the video being something out of mm -hmm. 80s, you know, sorry. Um, also, yeah. you know, uh, we, some of the pictures, you know, we've aged since the last time. Someone has been here for a while. Because you know? the argument to keep By the old your picture. tongue. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, the point I'm making is that we should. I think branding is important, but also mm -hmm. for our constituents, they should you know, know who the new top board is, the president, the titles, any updates. Yeah. And I hope we do more of that as well, because uh, even on the website, you know, <clears throat> you know, I, I like the access right now, but I think we'll change it. Mm -hmm. Put a little bio, mm -hmm. you know, as you said yourself, yep. you know. Even getting something as simple as a pen. We did talk about that. I actually think that is an important thing. And I know we tried it a couple of years ago with the shirts, but again, sort of referencing council. And I know they have more of a budget to do this or any budget to do this, and we don't. But I think that being able to, when we go to events, when we go to like, not necessarily school site visits, but when we're somewhere where it's like a an like art a fair or, or a pride yeah. or whatever, that we can show that we're board members, I think is actually really important. For the students and parents to see us so any kind of signifier i actually think because i think the shirts that we made had like the district but didn't say like board member mm -hmm. so i do think that there's something really important about that because we want people to know that we're showing up to support mm -hmm. so that's a that's a great thing to talk about well go ahead. No, no, go ahead. i was just going to say my only other suggestion on the bios would also be like if 
folks are hosting regular office hours or have kind of other mm -hmm. ways for folks to engage that we right. include that. That's a yep. great idea. Um, that we can include links. Thank you, Grant. Okay. So a bio page is going to be relatively static, but yeah, yeah. like, but an event, so. Oh, like, I just mean like Emily's got regular office hours. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I do. Really, so that's actually, I, I think that that's great. So being able for, so a bio is something that will get done. We'll send, you know, relatively small, not, it doesn't need to be scroll. Um, but then, um, yeah, if there could be a component or a page and a process kind of delineated of how, you know, do we send it to Cindy, Cindy then posts it for us. Um, you know, that would be great for, for announcements and updates from that board. It could also even be, as far as the office hours are concerned, part of the bio, like, Right, definitely yeah. holds weekly office hours from four to six. Email her. Yep. You know, so it does. It actually is. It's very low maintenance. Yeah, and and my hope is is that you know when we transition to districts, that also will have additional district information. So specific, right. like you know, this is the board district. It, it's that, gonna have to, right? That's right. Yeah. So, um, you know, that I mean, the board page is gonna have to transform in the fact that it will have to talk about we are districted, we are, you know, and explain mm -hmm. that. Also, I think we do a good job of explaining how much we're paid on the website, things like that, that are kind of, how much are these people taking it for? <laughs> Millions. $504 a month. Uh, four taxes. Seven. 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 Oh, four taxes. So, are you so, calculating how many hours will we put in? So, um, <laughs> but lapel pins um, or magneted. You magneted know. things would be cool. Yeah, so we can. Uh, to clarify, uh, lapel pin, do you want the name tag? pins and say your name with board member or just no i think they need to say board member like if we did like magnetic so we don't mess our clothes like yeah. if it just said like our names and like the usd member. board member yeah, so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. we can yeah. use it over and over yeah. Yeah. exactly yeah that would be great and then if there's new members etc that's just an automatic at that point mm -hmm. like that that gets produced as a part of a welcome to the team um I was yeah, there you go. I, right now, I just use my badge. Yeah, I just walk into every meeting. And just go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Make a necklace out of it. That's what I was saying. Not even. Okay, so we'll work on bio pages. The other thing is, is like, uh, not to be insensitive, but we've got some photos on the front of the website that have former board members, you know, and th those need to be rotated off. Um, former principals. Just, oh yeah. Let's let's refresh generally, but on the board page, we'll we'll go to bios. Uh, the montage will start working with the students on, you know, I don't want it obviously to impact anything else. So, you know, I, it's not a rush, but it, it just keep us updated on that front. And then um, lapel pins, right? Bios, lapel pins and montage. Yeah. Some kind of, I, yeah. Yeah. We're going to get to that a little bit later. Okay. Um, so Dr. Hill, who like manages the, like, is it? Uh, each pages so the board page is managed by my office got it i was just thinking about your question about photos mm -hmm. who, who we'd actually send for <laughs> not that i have any photos yeah yeah every time i go to a school i seem to forget to take photos <laughs> um, yeah. well, that's because you're doing your job then oh. yeah that's yeah. <laughs> no absolutely well and and I, I think it can evolve in time but this is you know i think a good start and it allows us to communicate i think just more effectively uh, mm. yeah this is board branding, but a little adjacent to it is just uh, social media and the number mm. of fake BUSD accounts that are on yeah. social media, like that ridiculous district Instagram one. Yeah. And it gets me every time. Well, they make it impossible for you to report it because they're like, please list the name of the actual account but we don't have an actual account oh. so it's like you can't even report it on instagram because we don't have a busd instagram mm -hmm. so it's like you get stopped in the process of reporting it so i don't know what if anything can be done but there's it's not great to have these like i mean and I, I remember letting you know because you have a fake one up there too yeah i can't get they won't take it down i know yeah. it's ridiculous I do get it suggested to me all the time. Same. That's how I found, that's how I found out it was it existed. So for the record, there's a fake Matt Hill Instagram account that is not me. It's my mm -hmm. picture. It looks like everything is legit, but it's not legit. And everybody following you is like your district people. It's the not Matt Hill. The not Matt Hill. But yeah. Instagram, so, I've I've had twenty people report it. I've reported multiple times. They won't take it down. Okay. And is there anything? Have we tried it with the district, the fake district one? Same thing. We've did some uh, research on trademark and copyrights. There's a problem. 
process on that, but even that they say is reactive. We've talked to some people that do that, copyright lawyers, and they said it really doesn't solve the problem. Right. So. Mm. Okay. Uh, but but I, we should... I, I do think it maybe is a good point, though, that the pages may also want to list our handles. Our official handles. That's not a bad, yeah, or say, like, Dr. Hill does not have <laughs> an official, so, like, honestly, though. Honestly, yeah. yeah. I think that's important. Yeah, and I think even for the schools, too, right? Because that's been something where I think okay, PTAs the real, have. The real Burbank. Yeah. So this is it, it's I, evolving it's into. tangential, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, we're, but let's let's bring that back as kind of a general social media mm -hmm. conversation. Yeah. This is not specifically on board branding, but let's bring that no, back yeah. and let's have that because yeah. I, I think so, you know, or at, at a minimum listing handles or saying what handles exist or yeah. don't exist at some level. I like, think is, that's the list I have at school or at work is basically like, here are all the official ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Here are the rogue ones. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, is, our, uh, is our brand and the logo, is it? Uh, copyrighted uh, yeah trademark no so we could so for 1500 you can we can come back uh, that's the that's the research staff has done and you could do it but it doesn't actually solve the problem we're trying I'd to solve i'd rather have a much better logo than that. so what let's bring that back for a full conversation um yeah. i i think you know um as as Mr. Schlossman alluded to, this is not a conversation about the district logo. Having said that, not all of us are comfortable being represented by that logo. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, it's just not. And by the way, you don't need to spend a whole bunch of money. You, we spend money on our brands at all times. We spend money printing all the time. You just stop printing one and you start printing yeah. another and you phase things out over time. That's how all things happen. Huh. Um, so just, you know, again, that's not this conversation. Having said that, I will say like, I'm not wearing the logo. Um, not doing it. Um, so, uh, but I, I think there should be inclusive branding that people can wear, identify and, and allow us to be, you know, in just mm -hmm. a moment to approach all that. So mm -hmm. we'll bring that back. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Okie dokie. Uh, social media, bring back. <laughs> I'm like, well, let's bring it back. And then I forget about it during a gender mm -hmm. review. So, um, okay, perfect. That's not any others on that front. Thank you for that. We'll keep going. So uh, 3B, board meeting agenda, structure, and review. Um, do we have copies of our agenda from last week anywhere that we could run off and just kind of go through it as a model? I will print some. I mean, we also pull, well, you don't. This one's unique. So let me print off last week. Yeah, if you could. Yeah. I've got one. So you. Yeah, I don't, I have a uh, digital, so I'm good. Okay. Um, Just the effect. Can't get on my laptop. <laughs> oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll take it to Rick. Okay. But it was working fine forever. It jumps back. Then it wasn't. When you need it. Comes in. Never works when you need it. I sat here now and like went through the diagnostics. Mm -hmm. What are we doing wrong here? Fix this, change this, and it's not. Even that didn't work. I could go yeah. there. That, and, uh... You good? Mm -hmm. Okay. I dropped. You crumbed. I dropped some yeah. shoes. Triple chairs. I know. These are probably older than the montage. Well, yeah. the thing is, uh, in the yep. top of it, they're just so big. Oh. Yeah. Nope. Like I have very long thighs. Mm -hmm. I still no. like struggle to get my butt back. <laughs> that was a weird statement. Yeah. No, but I'm a I'm a weird proportion. I like now I see my children. No, it's like, a meaty. <laughs> <laughs> like Jack is also all torso the way I am. <laughs> yeah, I have uh <laughs> at about like an hour mark i'm like right there in front of you like i just start like okay, yeah my back starts like my yeah is not good. Oh, okay. i kept catching myself no, no. Like, all the way <laughs> oh and i just slowly start to sink down uh -huh. yeah by then i'm like a well, tiny little gnome well and also with suit jackets you become okay like oh. back. <laughs> Whatever the group wants yeah to. Sure. so i'm like i don't have the money for that by the end <laughs> like, i don't have the money for that. Um, yeah, totally. I'm just <laughs> by the end. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I get you. All right. So, um, 
Dr. Hill is bringing us copies of uh, of the agenda and what generally the agenda looks like. Um, I, I think it'll be helpful to have actually, you know, a copy in front of us, having, whether it's digitally or in, but there's a few things that, you know, one, just the structure of the agenda, does it work well? Um, Dr. Weisberg and I have spoken in exec committee about um, specifically like one, the presentation section uh, in the beginning, which usually takes up the lion's share of any meeting. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of by design supposed to be where the conversation is supposed to be had, whereas the business is obviously the business, but for the most part, they are relatively routine items. Um, so one, keeping one item academically focused, um, and then another item, which is uh, about operations, facilities, you name it, um, generally. Thank you, Dr. Hill. Um, <laughs> oh, lucky you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I can put one up on my phone, Steve. Okay. So, um, so. Blah, 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 blah. So in the 10 reports to the board. Mm -hmm. So really dropping it to two. Two at most, maybe three reports to the board. Oh, got it, got it. Every board meeting. Right. One that's academically focused, one that is operational. Yeah. Right, <laughs> operationally focused. Now that doesn't preclude us to getting to three, but if yeah. you see three, it's just, it's going to be a longer yeah, yeah. night. Yep. But that's kind of how hoping to do that. Um, uh, the moving retirements up from the end to the beginning. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then creating basically after reporting out on closed session, um, adjustments to the agenda, items for future agendas, we go into announcements. Mm -hmm. Um and have an announcement section after that before we go into reports from the board, which is our student members. Right now, we've kind of combined uh, responses to public comment with our announcements, which yeah. is, you know, when somebody's been up there telling a story about how awful their experience has been with something, you know, and then we're like, oh, and then we went to a party. Like, yeah. it just, <laughs> it's a it, little weird. Yeah, yeah it it, it's just, it's not, yeah, it's not sensitive. It, mm -hmm. So um, having a section for announcements, the idea would be, as you all know, we like shorter meetings, you know, efficient meetings, not shorter, but efficient yeah. meetings. So that we keep announcements to no more than three minutes, mm -hmm. three-ish minutes. Um, but that also be the board president use that time for retirements. Yeah. Um, uh, and any adjournment announcements at that point. Hey, wait, sorry. Yeah. I was pulling up and looking. Yep. Can you quickly for me? Yeah. As soon as I get my word up so I can type it in. This girl here. Okay, real quick again, what were you saying? So, so starting out, basically going to reporting on closed session, we'll do that. Adjustments to the agenda, items for future agendas. And then before reports to the board, we do board announcements. Or the, would that be considered like reports from the board of just like board member report or no? I mean, it, it definitely- You're Calling it announcements, is that what you said? Announcements, because it, it, it's- so all the Who stuff you did between the last board meeting. And so like last time I was like, also, I went to a school. Right, 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 right. Right, right, right. <laughs> I know, same. There isn't a place um, to put it right, right now. Well, and what I like about that um, is making sure that our responses to public comment then stay um, a response. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's right. Well, okay. So announcements by board members. Keep yep. going. Or the other thing is because it's before public comment, it will keep this brief because I think that's the focus yep, yep. Um, in getting to the public comment. Yeah. So um, then it's okay to not have an announcement too. If you yeah. That's correct. Of course. No, you have to. That's have correct. It. Yes. And any kind of reporting out anyway of actual official items should be as, you know, should be included as a part of the agenda fundamentally. Like if we're reporting something out, okay, then reporting out from five star, here was the finding we need the board to act in the fall. Like yeah. that's an item. Um, so um so announcements, again, a three minute rule on that front. So it'll be very informal, but, you know, trying to keep it to three minutes, that's 15 minutes if all of us do three minutes. Oof. So that's why I'm saying like, yeah, the, the incentive is to just say very quickly, you know, to acknowledge organizations, people that we've met with, um, and then kind of move on from there. Great. Um, report so three minutes max. Yeah, remember that. That's, that's, that's. Well, again, that's kind of the harder or the soft rule, but if it starts going long, then I can 
you know, remind I'll, I'll everybody. I'll develop the signal. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> Just, there you go. Okay. So adding announcement, an announcement section. And then when it comes to requesting to address the board, um, so we have public communication on agenda. Right now we break it up by agenda items and non-agenda items. Right. We've consolidated the public comment period rather consistently yeah. uh, in order to get people home. Yeah. Right. Um, first and foremost. So one, I think like the idea is actually to consolidate the public comment periods, yeah. but instead on the card, the public comment card um, is to change the order in which we take public comment. Yes. So, so if there is, so having three boxes basically to be checked, agenda items, non-agenda items, and student. Uh, if they are a student, I, I'm motivated to get that kiddo home. Yeah. Um, I don't want people necessarily abusing that um, and just trying to bring students to convey messages because they're going to speak first. And I do want to make sure, you know, that's all good on the legal side. But uh, I would like to be able to prioritize kids if, if they come to our meetings and hear it from them. A12. A12. But also, we're combining now, right? That we want I think so. The, the proposal is to have one period of public comment for five minutes, which is a long period of public comment, um, and to have basically take the cards as they come in, students would go first, agenda items then next, and then public, and then non-agenda items would be called after that. Yeah. But all within students, the same Whether period. or not they're speaking on agenda items or not. Um, yeah. Okay. Just letting them do what. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise it's coming in kind of as, as they're handed to you, that's mm -hmm. the order. Yeah, students, agenda items, on agenda items. Okay. We would just, cool. that work? Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense to me as far as, I think, speaking to the needs that we have Minors. <laughs> well, not, not just minors, but also, you know, our teachers who are coming, any any adult who works, anybody who works, right? Like coming to the board meeting and having to sit for two and a half hours to get a chance to talk, it just it, to me doesn't honor the intention of public comment which is mm -hmm. to allow people an opportunity to engage. Yeah. And it's different to your point, if someone's able to do it at 7.30 versus 11.30. Mm -hmm. And it also, so I, for, for me, I think it really speaks to us being responsive to the feedback we've been getting from people, which is, look, we really want to come and engage. Mm -hmm. um, but I just can't either, I can't get childcare for that many hours mm -hmm. or I can't be up that late or whatever. And so for me, this just feels like it's going to be it's going to speak to encouraging people to come and engage as opposed to setting people down who are like, I just can't be there for that long. Two questions. So first, would we continue to have a virtual option? And then the other is like, is there a, could we allow for the option of public comment at the end for people who were, were missed the first set? Hmm. So the virtual public comment, I believe, is controlled by state law. Yep. And whether or not that can, that's going to continue, I think there is some. First is going to change. Yeah, I was going to well, say. Well, I I want to. I would love it. to continue it. In yeah. perpetuity, if we can continue. It. We should. Um, there is a new legislation. I'll send a copy. It's I, I just it's changing March first. But whether or not we're required, accessibility wise, we should keep continue to do it. So I, so there the 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 law, the law right now well, basically. It, the law does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it basically says that this is not a valid form of public comment is, is what it says. I think it's wrong. Like, yeah. I think that we've opened this as an option and it we should maintain it, um, especially if somebody is sick and want to participate from home. Like, yeah. We should be able to do that. Um, so I, I think that is fine. Um, I think opening a second period of public comment, we can do that uh, if there's, you know. I can't imagine there's a ton of people that would necessarily participate. Yep. Um, at the same time, like thinking about like trying to make sure there's an option if people heard something during the meeting that they yep. then wanted to react. Run down to. That's too. fine. Yep. Yeah. I have a suggestion for that, which the reports to the board by staff come with lots of information. Mm -hmm. So maybe you move that up before public comment so that if people hear something, they can speak to it or it might change what they're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. It might bring about another thought process if those reports are given first and then public comment and then superintendents comments and then board comments. So the, my only, my only concern is, is like, for instance, 
I, I like I like the thinking around that. I think though that if, for instance, like we had the pre presentation from the demographer this week, relatively long presentation, or if we do like the first interim, it's a relatively long involved presentation. But there was a special comment section for the demographer. Uh, well, that's right. required because it's a sec it, right. there's also a separate public hearing for that. Public process. hearing, that's the word. I right. Mean. But the, the challenge is, is that if you have all the presentations and all those people who are, who again, may not be speaking on any of the presentations are now locked in for that presentation. Yeah. So that's why I would rather keep public comment ahead of that. You know, we do a final period of public comment as well. Um, no kind of, again, specificity. I would say that that should be to three minutes. Um, because I, yes, yeah, yeah. so five minutes and three minutes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think at that point, you know, again, if, if members of the public want to bring something up that we should reconsider in that moment, I think that's valid. Yeah. But I, I think like potentially five minutes of that, I, it, it's not the purpose to introduce new concepts at the end of a board meeting when the, all the action is done. Yeah. Um, I also think it gives us the opportunity to have its point too, of encouraging people to have more consistent communication with us. Cause you know, the performative public comments are not helpful for the district, but mm -hmm. somebody who's really invested in in conversing with us about something they heard during a presentation, um, if they've already spoken, right? And then they're like, oh, so either, yeah, there is that option yeah. of the like, like I think it was late night. It. She yeah. came at the she, beginning and at the end, right. right? And she had different things to say after she'd heard some of the presentations. Right. Right. So I think having those two options available and then also consistently reminding people, you can reach out to us at any yes. point yep. like we actually would love it if you reached out to us before the meeting so we can talk with you yep. um so to me the the shifting it to where we're shifting it consolidating and having that three minute option at the end for people who may mm -hmm. feel so compelled i think that makes a lot of sense and yep. speaks to miss tabbitt's concerns and also our hope to accommodate yep. a more accessible public comment period and 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 i think that that it's not a back and forth so um, I, I think what also is good is that it maintains that anybody coming to any member of our any member of the public has eight minutes yeah. that they can take up uh, a, a, to present ideas and concepts. Like I, I think that that's More pretty than... dramatic. Well, and, and um, if you look at compared to most other yeah, when I tell <laughs> when I tell other people when we have conversations with other boards or other, um, and I've talked to people in city council and they hear how much uh, space we give, they're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I and I love it. I think I don't want to reduce it. Yeah. I just think that what we're doing now is in in some ways expanding it, or at least expanding the opportunity mm -hmm. for people who otherwise it just wasn't realistic to come. Yep. So I like it. The next station is AB twenty four forty nine. Okay. And is that um that's changing AB three sixty one right, which mm -hmm. was the first one? Okay. Yeah. Going through that right now in my I know. They're very strict. March first, yeah. right? No, I need to look. at it. So, I know I haven't looked at it yet. So bless you. Uh, so we'll bring that item back actually to weigh in on because yeah. like I yeah. think keeping virtual public comment is kind of critically important. I know that there's other, actually I'm not, I feel like pre-COVID um, one thing that was allowed was basically sending an email to be yeah. read um, allowed at the board meeting if you couldn't make it to public comment. Yeah. Um, and then that. basically timing it out essentially mm -hmm. if it went over time mm -hmm. so i guess i would be okay with that if there's no option for virtual like yeah if we're not really? allowed to do it <laughs> yeah i would like to figure out the closest we can come to it to asynchronous or non-in-person uh, i'll do the research on that Thank i you. think the email one is more problematic than the virtual public comment but I'll i agree i believe <laughs> i believe we can keep virtual public comment but yep. if we cannot i'll update the board Great. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the other thing that I just as far as um, accessibility and engagement, and this is this is a conversation I think for our when we have a joint meeting with council, is uh, the conversation regarding having our meetings on the Burbank channel on YouTube, because That's great. because yeah. people cannot find us on Granicus. It's like the most impossible thing to find. It's glitchy. It's problematic. Being able to go to the Burbank channel to find mm -hmm. school board the way you find all the other boards and commissions, I think would be I don't know the cost. So that's why I'm saying we need to talk to council about it. Yeah. Um, I mean, all the cameras are there because there are already, already well, and they do it for council. They do it for council. So yeah. it feels like it would be again, accessibility wise. It, to me, it's a no brainer. I don't know the history of why we aren't there, but it feels like we should be there. I mean, not saying disappear Granicus because it needs to live on our, on our website, but like 
we should be on the YouTube channel. Yeah. It just, it just, again, allows people a very, go to the Burbank channel on YouTube. Here's the, where the mm-hmm. meeting is. And if it makes it easier a, to share. Purchased a YouTube channel, which is what I think you have to do then. No, they just post it on the Burbank channel. Like our meetings would stream the way that city council meeting. Well, I thought you wanted our own YouTube. Oh God, no. Oh, we, we do have a yeah. USD YouTube. Yeah. Oh, it's free. I mean, well, look at that. I, I like the idea of, I'll, I'll reach out to the city of just, yeah. you know, if we can just, just add our, our meetings to their. I just think it's uh, nice to have us concentrated in the place where all the other meetings about like, and obviously, you know, we're separate from the district and budget, et cetera, but it's nice to be part of it in that way. Where people can just we're not go that separate. Yeah, That's right. We shouldn't be in that capacity. Yep. So. Oh, uh, uh, in terms of the agenda, I know the recognition of part, but if I also would like to, you know, found it like the people are retiring. Mm-hmm. I would love them to invite them if they can. Yeah. Come and maybe give them a little certificate for their yep. service, something. Yeah. Just so people can see who these individuals are. Absolutely. And maybe they can share an interesting story that mm-hmm. will, you know, encourage others to come to Burbank and work in our district. Yeah. So what? So previously, I talked about announcements. So announcements and presentations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. just kind of combining it into one. Okay, got so, it. So that's where your presentation. Your certain, when we get to recognition, that's where that would go. That's where that would go. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Any other changes? Yeah, um, These are really positive. Yeah, I I'm hoping that it will. Um, so. When we're scheduling different components of agenda setting, you know, if there's an academic related, like, hey, I really want to dig deeper into this, like, let us know so we can start plugging it in for because, you know, we'll talk about board priority, board member priorities, you know, this is that opportunity to go, you know, I really would like to learn more about dual immersion, I I really want to learn more about this. And now we've got a dedicated section to it. Um, and, And a dedicated section where we're focusing I feel like we spend a lot of time doing crisis management with finances. And as a result, the attention doesn't always go to the academics. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, and so this allows us to kind of balance that, I think, in a in a meaningful way. Um, so I think this is probably in Dr. Hill's head, but I don't know if it's sanitized anywhere else, which is like, what is upcoming in some of the board meetings? Like there are certain things that we're going to look at on a regular basis, right? right? And yeah. like have, knowing what that cadence is, is something that like I've worked on with my board at work of mm-hmm. like, okay, we know that in this, at this time, we're going to do this budget report at this time, we're going to look at end of year results at this time, mm-hmm. we're going to look at mid-year results, things like that. And I would love to, to have a better understanding of like where we're slotting those things in, especially mm-hmm. if we're going to go to one, ac- especially in the academic side, mm-hmm. one academic thing per mm-hmm. meeting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's fine. So we can build out like a a, a calendar, yeah. so to speak. Like yeah. it's that's really I, right now. I think a lot of it's driven, frankly, by budget. Like yeah. it, it, that calendar, it's not really driven by yeah. the other side. So yeah, it's yeah. Good to kind There's of some report new kind of stuff that has to go to board approval. There. Yeah. What well, we can do, we do a month. We have an annual one. We're just published that um, the monthly board action items BAI. So we send that out. Mm-hmm. That kind of gives you a preview but it'll be we'll go ahead and just highlight the current month but show you the full month and we can talk about adjusting that in governance um you made me think of two things thank you um thing one thing one is i know that we've had conversations about there being like a giant master calendar that lives somewhere on the website and that there are it's just not possible (laughs) that's not what i want to talk about (laughs) but what maybe maybe it's possible just wouldn't be perfect all the time. I think for, for me, just from a board perspective, and this goes again to sort of like our interaction and our involvement as far as like learning. So I was talking with Abby who went to the DI meeting and I was like, oh man, I wish I would have known about the DI meeting. So is there a way, because I go to things and just sit in on things, thank God for Zoom as much as I can, yeah. but is there a way to provide us with some sort of a list that just has like I don't even know activities like the or the major the meetings. meetings like I reached out and got all the DLAC and ELAC meetings so I have those calendared and I go to those when but I have them on my calendar mm-hmm. so like gate meetings DLAC and ELAC DI like all of the different things that and again we're not going to be able to make all of them but just knowing that they're there so if you're like oh wait I actually do have I, my 6 p.m freed up I can hop on the zoom and I think it just gives for me it's been really helpful in sort of learning about all these different programs to be able to sit in whenever I can. 
I will say you will get called on when you show up. I've never, <laughs> I've never been called on. I've <laughs> never <laughs> been called on. So it also would prevent us <laughs> from uh, brand act violations. Priya was my show up, not knowing that we were all going to be. True, well, but we're not there to vote on anything. We're the vote there. We're just there to sit and listen. Well, and and three of us being present is not a Brown Act violation. No. Three of us talking about a, an item that's potentially coming to a vote before the board. That that's where it, we. Yeah, start I'm, but I'm talking about some of these other well, Having, anything we have to vote on. And, right. So we'll be. I think we want to be careful, but I I just think that if there was some place, and Matt, I don't know how difficult this would be to do. So me asking this is. Well, yeah, but and, I and we're also having a conversation a little bit later in the agenda on consolidating a number of these meetings. That's right. That way, that's right. Frankly, it could potentially be less arduous to kind of track these because there's a regular schedule potentially. But if not, I do think that like a monthly governance calendar that would be, be great. That would be great. Um, and along with that too, um, with um, the CBRA stuff, like I didn't know the website was up. I didn't know it was until we didn't meeting. know until the presentation. <laughs> so it would be great. I don't know again who that comes from. To, to be fair, and I think they launched it right before the meeting. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, and Weird. they should edit it. Uh, just there are some references to older communities. Uh, just a heads up. Is is who is looking before that gets um, posted not on the agenda or going live? I know, um, <laughs> Matt. Does somebody from the district like? Are you looking at it? Uh, Mr. Cantwell is the lead on that, right. working on the demographers and Mr. Sims. Um, okay. But I'll follow up on that because this isn't. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. I keep deviating. But, yeah. So all good then. Yeah. So um, a governance calendar would be fantastic. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Okie doke. Um, that wraps us up. Any other adjustments to the agenda? <laughs> okay. Wonder why. Uh, oh. <laughs> Is there anywhere in any of these items that it says uh, any of sorry <laughs> remembering? Uh, sorry, I'm I'm still having my call. <laughs> um, does it anywhere say that any of the speakers, if they need a translator, it will be provided? Yes, yes. It does it does? Um, oh, if you require Spanish or Armenian ASL translation of the meeting, please. It says of the meeting, but I thought there was also for public comment. Well, the the issue we also on the day before. The question that I have about that and have had about that for a couple of years is if you, like, how do you find that information and utilize it at 3 p.m. before, you know, like I, yeah. I, I would like us to think about, again, how we can make it easier and simpler mm -hmm. or even just maybe the word is clearer for people who need translation to know how to do that. Um, Matt, I, Dr. Hill, I don't know, and and I was going to ask this about the changes we're making to the agenda, because obviously we want to let people know that things are changing. Um, and I think we need to let them know before they come to the meeting and like, we'll have something posted, but how do we communicate maybe more effectively to the community, the sort of procedural element? So like, if you need a translator, I know it's on the agenda, but is there somewhere more center we can put like, hey, the agenda structure is changing if you need a translator. So it's like, because right now I think, and please correct me if I'm wrong, there's a lot of clicks you have to click to find that information. I'm talking about, well, there's the, the board highlight email that has that in there. Mm -hmm. so that goes out and that's front and center. You say on the website, make that more. Visible. I think so. Or even just when we, you know, like on social media, if we're posting like, you know, like the board highlights that um that's, that she does a great job doing, like, is it possible to include that on in the board highlights? Leave it in there, but I'll double check. Yeah, maybe part of the notice of just like, <laughs> FYI. But we can make, I, I hear last. you, we'll we make it more, a little more central. Yeah, we're making yeah. Central Do you think visible. people aren't getting to speak up because they don't know that that's happening? I, I don't think that people, I will say this, I think more people would perhaps engage if they were aware of the opportunity to have translation. Mm -hmm. I, I imagine that it's not that people are saying, I don't know how to get a translator, but somebody who would say, who might say, well, I'm not going to go because like, I don't, if it's, right. if the, the how to is clearer, I think it would, it will open the door for more people. And I think we won't really know. And, and I think the litmus test of saying, well, nobody uses it isn't a great litmus test mm -hmm. because we should be offering it and being as clear as pop possible, even if nobody ever uses it, yeah. because we want people to know that it exists. So I think having the new this, the new changes to the agenda structure and just more clarity on the translation opportunity, I think is just it, 
it's it's a good thing to do. It's a good practice to be in. And like, I think your suggestion of having the notice is great. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great suggestion. And I've said this over the years, language barrier. It's huge. And, and, and I've heard from some of the community members who are very well educated, but they don't, but their English yeah. is not their first, so they will not come. Right. Where if we are putting this out there with a professional translator. Yeah. And LA did this and it's grown. At the beginning, they had some issues too, and now the numbers have risen because now people know. It will take time. You're saying at the city or at LAUSD? At LAUSD. Yeah. Okay. You know, and, and it, it, when they started it, it just grew. Yeah. Uh, beginning, I think just the option being out there. Yeah. yeah. And not making people, there's there's embarrassment because you're you're right. Like it's not about education or intelligence. It's just about literally the language. Mm -hmm. I think making it more um, visible and accessible. Yep. Got it. Thank you. Any further comments on agenda structure? Not, we'll keep us moving. Um, item 3C, individual board member priorities for the year. So we do our annual goal setting. That's organizational goals, you know, what we're trying to do as a district. But um, especially as we're building out these agendas, you know, uh, it, it's helpful to know what items certain board members want to hear. Ms. Tabbitt a few meetings ago talked about fields about usage about uh and and bringing that up curriculum etc about speeding like you've talked about these things um so as a result of you flagging that i'm like okay great when do we get that on an agenda for miss tabbitt um but other board members may have individual priorities that they want to see come up on agendas or issues that they want discussed um you know in this in this year before the end of the year etc so i wanted an opportunity for everybody to kind of check in lay those priorities out so that way emily and i could take that back so that we as again we're doing these academic presentations operational presentations whatever we're slotting in what board members are asking about and looking to to deliver on so anybody want to start with their kind of high level individual well, priorities started with me you want me to continue then <laughs> I, I use your example, that's for sure. But well, you, you can start as your any. Uh, those your are any part of my my priorities that I one will continue to work on, which is safety around our school sites, be it speed or can we just get people to learn how to drive? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the okay. answer to that is no. <laughs> apparently, apparently, um, I saw new signs in some recent travels that uh, there's an additional fine. In a our 15 mile an hour school zone if you are on your cell phone mm. as well good that, that's cool i thought that already was a thing well wait so if you're on your phone you have to go slower no okay um, we, we are in a school zone. zone yeah you should be the fines are already higher right and i think it sounds like the e cell phone fine is also right oh. Oh. Oh, oh, oh so there's a there's a, there well you have to I'm, have a I'm penalty here. to the rules, right? <laughs> I get it, but when the penalty is always financial, yeah, then the low-income families get disproportionately their cars get impounded because they were talking on their phones. But they still need to drive 15 miles an hour, <laughs> like everybody else who it. makes more money. I'm than just that. saying they should be able to go to traffic school instead of raising the vines. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Okay, traffic school, whatever. <laughs> whatever. I just, just you know restorative justice. Anyway, <laughs> back to still would like yep. to work with the uh, with the safety. We've done some things with the um, Yes We Can group. Uh, they're doing some individualized work at both high schools for driver safety, prom safety coming up. So, so that's something I want to continue. Okay. Um, want, we did a little tiny bit of work um, with Lori Little's suggestion, uh, working on positivity and being good sports. That may be mm -hmm. minimizing it, but that's the basic. I mm -hmm. um, want to continue some work on that. Yeah. It's um, really a curriculum issue, so it's a big deal. Well, we had this conversation um, about how the pandemic has changed how people uh, present themselves, how our rules have changed, how people think it's okay to do X, Y, Z when it used to not be. Mm -hmm. And so how do we get back to, a, I don't mean back, back, but how do we get those norms up of being positive, coming, mm -hmm. you know, for an example, just cheer for your team, mm -hmm. cheer for the, the kids on the field or in the pool or whatever, for that awesome video that was made. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we get that video out to more people? So those kinds of things, 
to get to a place where um, a sporting event, a choir event is a safe and fun place to go and not a place where you have to worry about <clears throat> being bullied or yeah. you know, behavior. So, Got it. Um, mm -hmm, that one, um, this is really tiny but big to me. We used to have, Sarah's going to kill me because it's a lot of work on her office, but I'll help. I'm sure other people will too. Maybe that's a place for Mr. Schlossman to help. Uh, we used to do a employee um, uh, recognition dinner. Um, we had it outside of Burbank High. It was catered. I think they paid 10 bucks to come. Um, but it was a moment that we recognized people for longevity, for retirements. Everybody got to vote on, you know, there was different categories exactly. like now, like the, relatives kind of thing yeah the <laughs> most spirited yeah yeah the the best <laughs> yeah you know uh book room monitor or whatever yeah. the titles are I, so it, it was but it was a nice come together because it was really one of the few times that every levels of the district from you know principals to um all on the same level because they're all yeah. equally important to people in facilities whatever else and it was a nice event and it brought about some, you know, good, mm -hmm. good, good vibes. Mm -hmm. And I think that was important, which is also a great place, you know, like Gloria Meza, who's mm -hmm. retiring after what, 50. 45, 50 years, yeah. you know, to get to, not everybody watches a board meeting. And yes, for the community to see that is great, but for our own employees to say. Yeah, peers oh, versus community, yeah. I think are different. Yeah, absolutely. so that's one priority I'd like to get back to. Are these kind of along the lines you were thinking? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and one, yeah, I think that's. Okay. Anybody? I never know what might pop up. <laughs> for the yeah, yeah, that's helpful to know. No, I'm like, those, those actually seem very achievable. No, <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. I'm realistic. What do you want for me? <laughs> Dr. Ayakani. I'm the president. <laughs> Um, of course, continuing with the DEI committee and being involved. DEI in work, yes. okay. Also with the, the environmental issues in the committee and working on that as we're trying to yeah. mm -hmm. make our district greener. Uh, career tech education. Um, I am in the conversation with our vice mayor right now, and I've talked to you about mm -hmm. this. Um, hopefully it's good news coming soon in terms of having Central for Entrepreneurship and an incubator for innovation and entrepreneurship as well. Um, uh, English second language, you know, language. Uh, I, I, I've been, I want us to really kind of start looking at what's been happening in Burbank. Some of you know I've been going there on a monthly basis, talking to some students. Right Burbank now. High? Yes. Okay. For newcomers uh, who don't speak English, and I can tell you from the first meeting to the second, it's a day and night. Uh, mm -hmm. Students are interested. The career uh, options have changed. They're, mm -hmm. They've gone from, I don't know what I'm going to do when I graduate to like, I want to do this now. This mm -hmm. is the second meeting. Okay. Yeah. So I want us to kind of put this out there as well. You know, a lot of us, you know, have experiences, have friends, but also I think these students also need some mentors who come from the same struggle, mm -hmm. talk to them and give them the right direction. That's very important to me. Um, Mm -hmm. as well so that's something that i want us to encourage in other uh, schools mm -hmm. as well not only burbank high school right um and then uh i know we have a five-star coalition but anything legislative legislative wise i want to be more involved with just based on my years of experience there we go got it mm -hmm. can i jump back because i forgot something nope <laughs> gonna... yeah I don't know. I, I don't really think to throw at you. <laughs> I do have stuff to throw back. <laughs> um, <laughs> our our elementary music programs um, like to be involved in looking at those programs and monitoring them and see what our expectation is for those programs and students and how they get evaluated. Okay. Got it. Did I take one from you? No, no, no. Okay. I just I have ideas for you. Okay. That's fantastic. One last item. But it does need for the tour. Okay. Uh, I also want to brother. I want to be more uh, engaged with 
the business community, including the chamber. You know, we've been <clears> getting <throat> invitations to a lot of these grand openings now, which is great. Mm -hmm. We should be there. I think what's important is once we strengthen those relationships, we can also look at these businesses as partners, you know, right? Mm -hmm. Supporting our schools and knowing what's oh, going on. As, as I don't know if it was you said it or um, Emily, uh, Dr. Weisberg last okay. meeting, uh, that people come to Burbank because of our schools. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have said this over and over mm -hmm. again, uh, that that is the reality. A lot of businesses will also benefit from this. Mm -hmm. They're also partnering and working with us. So with your permission, I'm gonna get a little more active in that area as well, working with uh, with the chain. Well, and and just as a heads up, my hope is basically, you know, everybody gives the feedback yeah. now, and then we figure out how to put these on the agendas in ways that, okay, great, like you want to reach out to the business community. Fantastic. What do those benchmarks look like? What does outreach look like? How do we actually get returns for for that, so to speak? Right. You know, like hey, okay, we're going to do an outreach program of, you know. Um, you know, a business loyalty program and we're, you know, for five bucks, you'll get a sticker in your window saying you're a friend of Burbank schools. Great. This is what that looks like. Dr. Aga Kanyan is going to take lead on that, right? It's the conversation to, it kind of triggers those conversations so we can move forward with actual programming to address these things. Okay. Um, to my right. Yes. Uh, not one of my goals, but I know that one of the district goals was around like figure out where all the master plans are and, and communicate uh, updates on them. And so like, there were a lot of things that I wasn't sure kind of what was um, in the hopper already from a priority perspective. So that's okay. uh, maybe for our kind of regular meetings, Dr. Hill, but um, certainly some things that um, I'm interested in, right. Especially in terms of DI um, that we've kind of heard people wanting an update on that master plan, et cetera. So um, my priorities, um, I try to align to some of the uh, annual district goals here. Um, so the first was really about increase, increasing on the revenue side um, through our stabilized slash increased enrollment and advocacy. So similar, I think, to what Dr. Arakanian was saying about being more involved uh, legislatively and working with other districts and working with like um, at the state level, locally, et cetera. Um, I think that goes along well with uh, 4.1, which is the Superintendent's Budget Advisory Committee to identify efficiencies, though that one really talks, I think, more about the expense side rather than the revenue side. But yeah. that's where I drew a, um, a connection. Um, and then on the college and career readiness side, um, we do have a specific goal around number of high school students completing A through G increasing by 2%. Um, you know, I had a conversation with Dr. Hill a couple of weeks ago when we got the uh, clearinghouse data back about just like, I really want to understand why our A through G is pretty low. Mm -hmm. um, and because, you know, we do see a lot of our students going on to post-secondary and I kind of want to understand that uh, the students that are in community college, is it because they need remediation? because they don't qualify for um, our UCs and our CSUs, or is it um, that they're choosing to do that because of financials, right? And so like, I, I feel like A through G is all kind of wrapped up in there. Um, so A through G is one thing that's really um, important to me. And then one nine is around um, the two years of community college and or ex apprenticeship experience. Um, and, you know, there's an implementation goal on there for basically two years from now. So that's work that has to get done. Mm -hmm. um, ahead of time. And so those are, those were my three that I identified with okay. for the year. I okay. think especially the advocacy stuff is just, it's really hard to, I think, I don't know if, I think we all got the email from someone after LCAP saying like, yeah. we're only looking at the expensive expense side of things. Why aren't we looking at the revenue side of things? And I think to your point and to your point at the last board meeting, like, I think we're all trying to do some things on that. I don't, um, it's hard to figure out a plan <laughs> for political advocacy mm -hmm. in uh, uh, open meeting, right? Um, because you've got to be able to kind of throw some things around and figure it out. So, um, but it is something that I feel like would be worth our time to to plan for yeah. and have a strategy for all of the different ways uh, to bring in additional revenue. Okay. Dr. Debbie? I have so many things. Um, <laughs> we have so much time. 
Don't I only worry. picked three. <laughs> well, too bad. <laughs> Some of my bullet points are just like one bullet point. <laughs> um, what da, ba, da, ba, da. One of the things I'd like to do, and I, and I, thanks to Dr. Hill about this, is I want to take a look at, because um, he's already done work in this area, about graduation requirements and how they sort of, um, how our different student and family populations are impacted by them. So specifically, we've been talking about the, do we call it service learning or community service, service learning. or service learning requirement? Mm -hmm. um, but just making sure that the sort of um, policies we have in place for things like graduation, we're taking into consideration our different student populations uh, when we're doing that. So that's a priority for me. Um, some, I mean, and that is sort of under a larger. Mm -hmm. uh, another priority is sort of expanding our our understanding of DEI more holistically. Mm -hmm. So. You know, we've talked a lot about in the last couple of meetings, uh, differentiated instruction and making sure that there are opportunities for professional development because that falls into DEI, right? Like DEI is, is so large. I also, it, to, to your thing as well, um, your thing, I apologize, <laughs> your thing. So um, in regards to like the DEI master plan, making sure that we are really clearly communicating with the community, the work that's being done with our teacher leaders on the school sites, where we are with reintroduction of books or choosing of new books. So just... We get updates relatively regularly, but I want to make sure that we are updating our community because that's something that people are interested in and invested in. And where are we? What have we been doing? Mm -hmm. How is it going? Um, the uh, mental health, our health centers and thinking about how we can expand. Um, and, and some of these are obviously for next year, but really thinking about them and putting some action behind them this year, how we can expand that work into middle and elementary. I mean, every report that's coming out mm -hmm. is just sort of shattering in regards to mental health for especially young women, but for all of our, our young people um, and how we can make the services that we are already mm -hmm. offering um, talk about that too. more available mm -hmm. or I don't know what the word is. I'll figure it out in a minute. Mm -hmm. Accessible. Accessible. Um, enticing isn't the word, but also how we can get our students to use them. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right. So like one of the things that telling, well, also, you know, one of the things that came up at the end of last of, of last year is I met with the student mental health board and they gave a lot of really wonderful and positive constructive feedback on things that they wanted to see in the mental health center. Right. That and it was all great. So how are we, you know, are we taking the time to check in with our students so that we make sure that what we're offering is what they actually need or want? Yeah. Um, this is a small thing. No, it is. It actually is. I swear. But I'm stealing it directly from city council. Um, I already spoke with um, Mr. Ferguson about this, for President Ferguson, is that I, one of the things that city council does when they do their monthly proclamations is they invite, they had somebody from the library come. So for like Black History Month, they had somebody from the library come and talk about like books and resources. Ooh. I know that yeah. so <laughs> we got to steal it. Mm -hmm. What a great way to involve our school librarians to have them come for our different months, different proclamations and share resources books how i mean like we're stealing it's such a great mm -hmm. idea mm -hmm. um thank you city council mm -hmm. um working together <laughs> stealing their stuff um yeah i mean a lot of the other i, I have one other one it's seven item 82 um I look for 82. So no, I just feel like I have 82 things. Um, also thinking about how we can better support our students as they prepare for graduation. So mm -hmm. apprenticeships, two-year, four-year. Uh, Ms. Solberg, who is, is here, has been really phenomenal in um, generating some fantastic ideas for way we can, ways we can support our students as far as like essay reviews and financial aid information, especially with now the FAFSA requirement and the opt-out requirement that that speaks to one of the things of what how are these requirements um, connecting to different student populations and impacting them differently. So I think that's that's really something and a huge appreciation to her for all the work she's already done. Um, I really like that. Yeah, you because filling out that FAFSA form as I learned the hard way. If you don't fill it out right, you screw this on out on some Thousands. money. Well, no question. And yeah. forever, basically. Well, yeah, it's <laughs> really hard to change. And Miss Weaver was telling me when I met with her at Monterey that one of the problems that their students face, their student population faces, is that, you know, so you either fill it out or you opt out, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you're if you're 
parents are working multiple jobs. They don't have the time, resources, or energy to fill it out and they opt out, they're missing out on all the things. So if that's a requirement, how can we better support those student populations and those parents and making sure they're not opting out that they, or, or they're, they're opting out from an informed place that if yep. they choose to do so, it's because they really know. And so I think when we're faced with stuff like that's not our choice, that's a state choice, but what are we doing to support our kiddos and our families? So um, again, appreciation to you for that. And Miss Weaver was really the first person to get me thinking about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and just in, just in general, this isn't a goal, but I think all of these things, how we communicate this to our community, the district community, how are we talking about all of this? Whether it's communicating the advocacy that we do, not during board meetings, whether it's communication about new positions that we're creating and how those are created to meet the needs that have been expressed by our teachers and classified staff. Mm -hmm. Um, All of that stuff is always a priority. So continuing that conversation for every priority that we all list, I think, has got to be like at the top. At the end. Busy at all this year. No, there's nothing to do. Um, Great. Okay, just making sure that as much of this as possible so we can start scheduling this um, in different ways. Um, so for uh, my priorities this year, um, build on a lot of the themes that frankly, I think we've all been kind of touching on in different ways. So one, um, I feel like I, I hear from, you know, I, I we've now kind of, Ms. Tabit, Dr. Agakani and I have now been on the board long enough where we're starting to kind of see some parents phase out, new parents phase in, and it's like, it's now very cyclical and you're like, wow, okay, time is passing. Um, having said that, you know, the, the new generation of parents coming in, right, have a learning gap uh, that they now have to learn all of the different systems and all the different things. And, you know, we've talked about Ed 100 as is, a good means to do that kind of outreach and that education. Great. That's one. Um, but realistically build a, what I really want to focus on is, is working with PTA council uh, and developing a parent wiki, which is basically a one-stop centralized hub of information and videos with all the core things from enrollment to how you resolve an absence to, and again, having YouTube videos that are just centralized in one location, you know, BUSDparentwiki.com. And it's all just in one place. I love this. Song. Um, so I, <laughs> so I, I, I think this is something we build on over time, but I, my goal would be to work with the PTA council, identify kind of the top 20, you know, questions that can be answered. Um, most of those videos can carry on and we can even joke about how old they are if the information stays the same. But um, we can look at the less at, let's ask question. And yes. And oh, this- Wow. Okay. People ask this question every single year. Let's Mm -hmm. give them the info. So I think this is an exercise that can be done every semester. It can really, you know, I don't want to, I want to get it up. That's, that's what, you know, I want to get it up and posted for people to actually be able to utilize it now Mm -hmm. before it becomes overwhelming, because I think there's a number, there's millions of questions, millions of questions that need. What's your expectation? Because I think this is a great idea. So I'm going to do it. So again, staff will, staff will do it, but we'll, you know, it's a priority of mine to approach PTA council to get this off the ground mm-hmm. formally. And I, I make up that a lot of those resources exist, but not all in one place, right? That's right. right? A lot of it is like individual schools have developed, right. here's how you do this, right. individual like TAs have developed those things. Right. So like, can we consolidate them into one place? I think is a really beautiful idea. Right. And, and I, <laughs> I no, I agree. And I think we start out with kind of the systemic district wide things that, that we can outline answers mm-hmm. to. And my hope would be over the next few years, eventually, again, there would be school based wikis on based off of individual schools and how schools ask you to take on different things. Right. But mm-hmm. You know, I think we need to model how we do this first uh, before, because otherwise it becomes like all these school websites. Everybody's throwing up everything, mm-hmm. and sometimes it's useful, sometimes it's not. Sometimes people have greater clarity or greater ease of explaining things. Sometimes they do not, um, and so just balancing that out. So that's that's a priority for my me. Own, my only concern that, and I always have this one with everything we talk about, is I feel we're still very short staff, and we keep adding stuff to people's plate. Well, and, so, and but I think this is important. I, 
I hear that, but I also didn't weigh in on your priorities and say, hey, you right, know. You're so, right. You're right. So it's a, you're, that's don't, fair. Don't put a seal on my, me. Because my apologies to you. Thank you. you. <laughs> um, so, so let me make it better. If the staff <laughs> member wants some help, I'm willing to help on this because I think it's so important. Thank you. Now she's trying to steal it. <laughs> <laughs> what a politician. So, <laughs> you now get it. <laughs> okay. So parent wiki is, is again, something I, I want. Uh, is a priority for me. Um, I spoke to Dr. Weisberg about this, kind of piggybacking on some of the mental health uh, related conversations. You know, I've been very involved in mental health in this district, suicide prevention policy, all of those things that frankly, our district has led and the state has then followed suit, which I love. Um, but I would like to create and work with our council partners to create a no wrong door policy uh, in the city, which would basically say that every single uh, recreation leader, any any student facing role that the city employs is trained on what the school district's resources are for mental health and that we design an application where both city employees, basically adults, can make referrals to our school based counseling program. Um, so that way, it doesn't matter if you're in a park or if you're at school, there's a pathway for kids getting help. Yeah. Well, and, and what I think is so powerful about that is, I mean, beyond it just being necessary, you just that one of the things that I've been, it's been a slow process, but hopefully will be mm -hmm. sped up is based on the information that we did get from the student mental health board and from talking to teachers and community members is working to create, you know, and this could be a shared app, but an yep. app that allows um, students to access our wellness centers in order to schedule appointments. Um, and then to provide feedback about the, yep. the people with whom they interact, because one of the issues that came up for the kids is like, I want to go, but I, I'm afraid I'm going to miss class. Yep. Mm. And if you're standing in line waiting to get in and yep. you're having anxiety or panic issues, that's not conducive to helping those issues. So giving students an opportunity to make an appointment not only helps that, but also helps teachers who are like, these kids are always leaving yeah. to just screw around in the health center. If you have to make an appointment to sit down and see somebody... Mm you're much less likely to do that. I also think how we integrate in if students just need to take a tent, like a couple, maybe it's like three times a month or whatever, where you can just go sit and be, and like, maybe you don't need to see somebody, but you do need, you're having a panic attack and yeah. you just need to sit and breathe. So figuring mm -hmm. out a way to sort of address those issues that have been raised by our students um, and do it in a way that is obviously like secure, it's yeah. confidential, but there are apps like this that exist and it also allows FSA to better utilize the staff that they have because they also have so so few staff members. And, you know, we only have the budget that we have. Okay. So I think it, it's going to allow the students to feel, to engage with the center more. It's going to allow FSA to do more with who they have, and it's going to meet the needs that have been expressed. So hopefully yeah. that's a place where both of those things can sort of. Well, and and a lot of it, the the no wrong door policy is just good practice because this has frankly been a 20 plus year partnership uh, between the school district and the city to have the uh, school-based counseling programs. It started out at community day school in 2002. Um, you know, so this is, I mean, it, it's been a long, and then it's evolved, right? So first it was, um, and I remember because I was in those meetings, first it was referral only. Uh, it wasn't self-referrals. Mm -hmm. It was just teachers, staff referring to the programs. Then the program evolved into, okay, can we cover all the middle schools? Yep, we can cover all the middle schools. Can we do the middle schools and high schools? Can we do the elementary schools? Okay, now is self-referral available? Okay, great. Now, uh, can we get two comprehensive mental health centers uh, at, our, at, our, at our high schools? And then all the challenges that come with that. So I, I think an app is the next iteration of it. I think it's an intersection where the no wrong door policy can meet with kind of accessibility needs. Um, and also, frankly, further cement this partnership because, you know, we pay $30,000 a year. Uh, the city pays $275,000 a year. Um, and, and that's a big ticket item uh, that the city has supported for a very long time. Having said that, uh, you know, it's critically important. Um, and, and so this, I think, builds infrastructure around that in a way that allows FSA, city partners, for all of us to know that we're invested in continuing uh, to make sure these programs are accessible to people. And we do actually have, you know, I believe we're basically maxing out the program uh, for the most part. So it's not for a lack of, um, and especially as more and more agencies are hiring mental health professionals, 
um, it's going to get harder and harder to to cover these slots. So I think all of those things are good. And I think, you know, when you had mentioned the app to me, I was like, okay, this makes sense, but let's, you know, let's find it and all that. So uh, the no wrong door policy is a priority for me. Um, uh, board history. Um, so we do not have, um, we joke about the board office, which is back here. It's really just a series of filing cabinets. Um, but no, it existed. Um, we really don't have records that go past and, and they're not even complete records past the 70, like mid 70s. Um, and so really partnering with our library uh, to bring about some of those, because I believe our district is going to hit its centennial soon, uh, mm -hmm. if it hasn't already. Um, so um, I, we weren't founded at the exact same time as a unified school district as the city was, but we're likely in that range. And so I think it's important history uh, for people to know. Um, for instance, one of the former school board members, uh, Mary Alice O'Connor, um, was quite literally the inspiration for the fairy godmother in Cinderella. She served on this board. One of us is, C really? yes, her husband was the animator, uh, one of the animators of Cinderella. Do you know she gave me her booklet that she was given as a board member? So I have that. There you go. And that needs to be part of that. There you go. There you go. So very cool. Absolutely. But there, there's a ton of kind of Burbank history that's very kind of unique and cool. And so uh, the library has a lot of those records. And I think it's just a good partnership mm -hmm. um, to kind of engage in. Um, another priority is modernizing and streamlining our governance process. So that is a conversation that we're having today. But, you know, I, I think we, especially moving to districts, we are not a small agency anymore. We are not a small town anymore. We don't need to act like a small like we need to make sure that we are as transparent as possible i think parents should be able to go to our website and very get a very clear picture of where we're going and what policy conversations are happening and further to know exactly how they can get involved whether it's with a translator or whether it's uh you know without a translator frankly so that's going to be a, a priority and then the second is uh or my last kind of but very heavy focus is going to be really breaking down and and elevating how the pandemic has impacted sped populations differently than other populations. Um, what we, you know, everybody's been impacted. Um, but one, there, there could be additional costs to frankly taking on some of the impacts to sped families. Um, I want us to be aware of that, proactive and building compassionate systems for those kiddos. Um, I think also like, you know, doing better at, you know, one, keeping it as a part of our agenda, that population as a part of our agenda, but two, giving more and more parents the opportunity to weigh in uh, and tell their stories. Because I think as Ms. Tabbitt was saying, we were talking about this a little bit, right? Every kid has impacts and we're just starting to see yeah. in, in kind of new ways how the pandemic is impacting young people. Some people have aged out of the K-12 system and now they're in college and it's all kind of paving in in different ways. Anxiety, how do I manage this? All of that. And they don't have the tools. Okay, that's for a person who may who knows that they don't have all the tools. Um, there may be individuals who don't aren't aware of the tools that they don't have um, and, and are K-12 opportunity, our K-12 experience, that is the time to get those those kids as much support as possible. So um, I, I I really want to focus on that during our time. And so I, I will be agendizing different and working with the superintendent to identify ways that we can talk about that story a little bit. Um, students to that? I, 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 it is, it is for students who learn differently. Uh, you know, um, I, I, our gate population is a part of that population for me, um, especially our twice exceptional population. Right. Mm -hmm. So but legally anymore, they're no longer a part of the SPED umbrella. So, but I, they need to be watched and looked at as well. I, I think we, it, we are not being responsible leaders if we are not checking in on all student populations. Um, having said that, I, I think um, my experience during the pandemic and in the return from the pandemic involved a lot of parents calling, um, very upset. Um, parents who I've still maintained relationships with who feel completely exhausted, completely overwhelmed. Uh, and we're not taught, I, I wish I could joke that this was, you know, four or five, that I'm just being hyperbolic, that I could, you no, know, I mean, at, at least two dozen different families talking about how their SPED student is so far behind and how the traditional tools that have been used to mitigate um, you know, struggle 
in an academic um, struggle in the classroom are not what is necessary anymore to get those. They are too far behind even for that to be effective. So if that's the case, then what are the learning models? What can we do? What can we deploy? We talked about this during the pandemic a little bit. We talked about how we brought, if we could potentially start bringing back sped students faster uh, in a bubble model, right? We, we were all trying to address these needs. They did it for some students, they didn't get met. Um, and so I just want to make sure that population in particular, who doesn't always have the ability to advocate for themselves, uh, is is elevated. But all populations, I think, should be reviewed. I just am specifically focused on that SPED population um, because I've heard the most about it, and I want to make sure that we're all aware. Okie doke. Those are our general priorities. Anybody else? I think that's a lot. It's good, but I think also it gives a bit of uh, flexibility for Emily and I to Dr. Weisberg. Excuse me. Um, it's a retreat. Yeah, it's a retreat. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, okay. I'm just I'm I'm remembering back to a moment where when I was appointed to the park board, my mom was at home watching me. She was very proud, you know, young appointee, and she's like, "You called him by your first name. Don't <laughs> ever do that again." I raised you better than that. So oh, that, no. that moment, you know, you'll get it uh, from me later. So. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, okay. Yeah, yeah, there we go. It's Rodriguez at that time, but yes. Uh, anyway, but there you go. Um, okay, so. Um, we will we will start working these into agendas in different ways. Really appreciate the conversation. It really helps. Uh, Dr. Hill, you you good? Any questions on that front? Okay. Um, great. And I have two different agendas, so now I'm kind of mixed up. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. We will go on to our action items. Um, to establishing uh, a process for board recognition certificates and honorary resolutions. Um, Dr. Agakanian, <laughs> this is your moment. It's your moment, It sir. has happened. It's time to shine. So uh, there's an attachment to this report uh, in particular, and I've taken some uh, at the request of Dr. Agakanian for years, um, you know, uh, taken the opportunity to draw together some uh, some protocols, basically, for how we... But that's why it's an action item. And I'm pulling this up because there's no printouts or I didn't bring my laptop in front of me. Do you have the protocols in the back somewhere? I do okay. on my computer. Great. So uh, <laughs> I, I can walk I can walk through them if, if we can share. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yay, sharing. Sharing is caring. Um, so one, uh, we've included some designs that are just kind of, again, can be printed out from our print shop. Um, and the different, uh, it's just basically color printing. Um, and again, different sizes. So basically standard, this is, the, the hope is basically that we adopt these protocols. These protocols are basically instructions to staff on how this is done. It's also limits on the board. So we're not going, hey, I would like 5,000 certificates prepared tomorrow with my name on it, <laughs> <laughs> right? It, it both restricts and enables so that all the processes can be planned and there's no kind of surprises. Because right now we do recognitions, but it's kind of spotty based off of, oh yeah, we should do that. Oh we, yeah, we should do that. Um, as opposed to, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so this kind of standardizes it a little bit more. So walking through it, this is kind of the proposal. One, certificates of recognition. So at the request of a, uh, a member of the Board of Education, everybody can give a member certificate. So this would be from individual board members. Um, so Ms. Tabit could give out mm -hmm. a certificate with her signature. Ms. Ponser Kamkar could give out one with hers. Dr. Aghanian. So again, if you're as a board member want to recognize somebody, boom, it's there. Um, the question. Yeah. But will it have also the rest of us under it? That's different. That's a resolution. Oh, so you don't want to do like. We are, but that's a resolution. That's different. Oh. I'll get to that in the. Oh. Okay. So individual certificates of recognition. If you want to go to an event, print them out, do it, you know, have them printed, have you signed. Great. You can do that. Board approval first. Not on certificates, uh, not on certificates of recognition. Okay. Because it's just your name that's going on it. It's right. Like yeah, but right. what if we're presenting them at a meeting? Wouldn't that have all of us on it? I'm getting to it. Okay. Like, let me, I promise <laughs> you. I promise you. Yeah. Okay. So that's individual certificates that any board member can give. There are no, um, any certificates which are presented during board meetings should be presented by the board president. Doesn't matter who they are because the board president does presentations. So if you want to do it at your own community event, 
then you get to do it. Otherwise, whoever's in the board president's chair, they get to do it during the meeting because we've elevated it to that level. Honorary resolutions. That's what these are. Yeah. Okay. So can you pull up, if you can, the templates? I can show them. Yeah. Yes. So can you scroll up to certificate? Sorry. Yeah. That's okay. So this okay. one is the certificate. So that's what a certificate looks like. Okay. And then present to blah. Yep. And then resolution basically looks very similar. But, but, everybody, but everybody would sign those. Okay. Okay. Resolutions of the board need to be approved by the board. Okay. Those go on the consent calendar. Okay. No, staff is not going to prepare resolutions, honorary resolutions, unless it's approved on the consent calendar. Okay. So, so it's approved ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And then and then the certificate's created. And then at the next meeting, essentially, we'd present it. Yeah. Or if a member <laughs> wants to present it, right. Or if a member wants to present the resolution on behalf of the board at an event, they can go take it. for. So yeah. in, any member can request. Um, the only cap we've put on here um, is the number of frames. Sometimes we would want it to be framed, obviously. Other times it would be in folders. Those frames are going to be a cost. Mm -hmm. So limiting that to 25 frames per year, basically. But otherwise, members can present resolutions and folders. If they're presented at the school board meeting, then the board president does it. If you want to, you know, put one up for approval because Jack's Pizza hit 60 years and you want to do a resolution of the board for them, great. You can add that to the agenda item, uh, add that to the consent calendar that would get approved, and then it would be delivered to you to be able to go and present it. Okay. Um, adjournment and memory certificate. So we do uh, adjournments in memory right now. Basically, you know, again, making sure that we do that as a certificate. It's actually very, very nice. I will tell you, uh, my former boss, Mr. Nazarian, when he got the adjournment certificate, it meant the world to him um, for his dad. Um, so, uh, you know, those moments, I think, for staff are, are really good, but we would keep that in place. So those would be our three standard recognitions that the board would give, either an individual member cert, an all board member resolution, or uh, an adjournment certificate. Does the adjournment certificate get signed as well or no, it doesn't look like it? Okay. No, it doesn't. There's no signature on it. It just says on this date, the Board of Education adjourned in memory of your loved one, blah. Okay, name. got it. Thank yeah. you. Not blah, but blah. name. Um, I have a loved one named blah. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, you, you have a loved one. Um, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> forever alone. Okay, thanks, Wynn. Okay, so going to uh, standing recognitions of the board. So, Basically, these resolutions that are given out, they are beautiful, they are pretty, all those things. Um, the standard people who would get these. So one, if somebody's president of the Board of Education and they finish their time as school board president, great, you get a resolution from the board recognizing your time as school board president. So Ms. Tabbitt would get the Can first- right retroactive? Yes, well, it actually says- I'm just- Oh, it does. It exactly. actually says that like recognitions for board members, et cetera, are all retroactive. So at any time, anybody prior to this, we can still recognize, uh, and, and we should. Um, retirement from the board. So if somebody doesn't become necessarily president, but they leave the board, they still get a resolution recognizing their service to the board. Um, and those get put automatically in the consent calendar and those don't get voted on. That's the only ones that don't get, because we, we're not going to be mean to each other and deny each other resolutions um, on the way out for service. If you serve the district, you serve the district. Um, uh, and then uh, retirement of student board members. So student board members would get a resolution when they depart, uh, and then parent community leaders. So the head of the PTA council would get a resolution when they are done with their time of service. Uh, the head of our bargaining units would get a resolution upon completion of their service, and uh, any uh, head of our district's foundations. Um, the, we would be the Oprah's of certs. That's exactly right. But those would be the folks who would also get it. Automatic automatic would get those. Those are our partners, you know, and, and so the leadership uh, partner, leadership structure of our partners mm -hmm. should absolutely be recognized. So um, staff turnaround timelines. So I, I put in here, I think this is, I, I want this to be as flexible as possible. I put this in as kind of guidance language. So as a, at least three business, you need to request your certificates at least three business days in advance. That gives district staff enough time to communicate, I can't do it in three days, I need more time. And there's no rushing district staff on this front. Like they need to be able to set the tone on turnaround time. And especially if it's a bigger order for certificates, if you're gonna give a set of certs to an entire class, 
Yes. Um, Cindy, we've talked about it. Uh, Ms. Quiterio, if, if there are digital signatures and you're comfortable with your digital signature being added, she can do that. Uh, if you would prefer to sign the certs yourself, she can leave that section blank as well. But those would be the options. That's it. Hallelujah. I love it. So can I get a motion? And so uh, last thing is the certificates of recognition that we would give out standard eight and a half by 11. Honorary resolutions, 11 by 17. They're big. Um, adjournment certificates, uh, 11 uh, by eight and a half. So those are going to be. And those are all numbers our print shop can handle. They're standard formats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So can I get a. Oh, there they are. Boom. There you go. <laughs> I just so moved. There you go. Yeah. Moved by Ms. Tabbitt to adopt okay. these protocols, seconded okay. by Dr. No, no, no. Ag Let, uh, Dr. Agakani. Yeah, Dr. Agakani. This is his baby. Oh, yeah. This is the adjournment Let's certificate. The... Adjournment in memory. Oh, okay. So, okay. Okay. So, uh, moved by Ms. Tabbitt. Uh, Tabbitt. Tabbit. <laughs> Extra syllables again. Uh, moved by Ms. Tabbitt, seconded by Dr. Agakani to adopt these protocols. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Great. Uh, Again, drowning in paper. Um, and then moving to the last thing, which is appointment of board liaisons, consideration of shared governance model, consolidation of board, superintendent subcommittees. Um, so this is an item uh, that I brought, the superintendent and staff have brought basically because we do every year when we do our annual reorg, we, we name representatives. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any problem with naming representatives to a lot of these kind of external organizations. So uh, the Burbank Arts and Education Foundation, DLAC. Can I stop this for one second? Yeah. Sponsor Kemper just brought up a good question. Is there a way to put the slides up so people who are here can see? I don't know where Aunt... Honestly, don't know. Because the computer's up, but that may be just for streaming. That's just for streaming. Um, these slides, no, we don't have. I know. She... But... Um. Everyone in the audience could pull them up on their phones. <laughs> um, it's not ideal, but you can see them if you download the agenda from the website. Yeah. I know it's so tiny, but it's yeah. a good thing for us to think about next time we do a retreat. Thank you. Okay. I'll do it. I'll do it again. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't. No, it, it was just an oversight. Usually we have the presentation laptop set up, and I apologize. It's, it happens. Okay. Um, so continuing on, so we'll, we'll, thank you. We'll figure it out next time. Like, <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, so we can still absolutely, I, I think, assign liaisons. We've kind of had some, you know, kind of, uh, interim appointments right now that I think are fine. They're working fine. Um, but in terms of, I've talked about this for a while, um, in terms of our governance structure, we have, some committees, which are superintendent subcommittees. We have some committees, which are master plan committees. We have some committees that are required by federal and state law. We have some committees that are uh, just kind of thrown together, frankly, on an ad hoc basis <laughs> and just like, hey, we're a committee now. Um, you know, and and the challenge is, is that they all meet at different times. Mm -hmm. they, it's hard to track. Some have formal minutes. Others do not have formal minutes. Some minutes are very uh, detailed. Other minutes, very sparse. Um, and so it's rather inconsistent. And my hope is to introduce, so I was a student trustee of uh, the Glendale Community College District, um, which is a part of, uh, you know, uh, state law prescribes a shared governance model that, frankly, I saw in full effect. And I think it's actually a very good governance model um, that is required by state law. But again, it's not required for local school districts, but attempting to kind of bring that model to Burbank Unified in order to uh, streamline the number of meetings, basically moving, you know, consolidating the number of meetings to basically three standing committees of the board, uh, along with any other committees which are required by law. Um, so that would be, for instance, LCAP is required by law. Uh, that's We don't have a choice of having an LCAP committee. We have to have an LCAP committee. Um, so basically it would, if you look through the presentation, um, it would basically create Three committees, uh, three standing committees. One would be administrative affairs, which would have oversight over um, facilities and finances uh, and the LCAP process. Um, academic affairs, 
we have a lot of committees in this district, but not a committee centrally focused on academics. Ironic. Um, so it would be one that's focused on curriculum development, on um, on ensuring uh, that we're meeting academic standards, how we're working through that, how we're working to achieve that. Um, so anything related to academics uh, in our district. And then student affairs, which has to do with student life, student uh, wellness, um, uh, general, just again, student related items. Uh, everything's technically student related, but again, you know, uh, graduation requirements, that's an academic affairs thing. Discipline standards, student affairs. So those would be the three committees. The idea is to have those three committees co-chaired by, by school board members, by the policy leaders of this district. Um, you all co-chair it. Uh, things that need to get to a board agenda should go through those subcommittees before it gets to a board agenda. That way, um, members, of, and by the way, all these committees would be televised or streamed. So that way, members of the public, when they see an idea on a board agenda, or they see a something on a board agenda, it's also been streamed through a subcommittee as well. So now you've seen an item not once, oh, I didn't get enough notice about this. I didn't, no, no, no. It, it's been on our subcommittee. It met. That was a public meeting. Now it's on our school board meeting. Um, and it's good. So all the recommendations from all these committees would go to exec and exec would then schedule basically everything that the committees have laid out. Uh, the committees would be basically about one, two, three, four, five, 12 people. Um, two board of education chairs, two reps from the Burbank Teachers Association, two from CSEA, two from PTA, two from BASA, and two from students, student populations. So everybody would be at the table. And then uh, the foundation partners and our district staff would serve as ex officio members. So they would have access to each of these meetings, but the discussions would be amongst the groups that um, are most impacted by the policy. Um, so that's the structure from a 10,000 foot kind of conversation. I've actually written it out in each of these levels of what different committees would be working on and what committees would be consolidated. So administrative affairs, for instance, um, would have oversight over budget, LCAP, facilities, employment, job classification, and, and recruitment. I'm just curious why LCAP is there, not under uh, academic. Because it's budget. It's because it drives budget decisions. It it doesn't mean that all of these things will be housed. I, I think that's a good point. Like, there's going to be moments when it really impacts both. Okay, that's when your school board president and your exec committee sends it to a specific committee and designates it. So each year, that's where if there's kind of a tie between policy committees, okay, the board president, whoever they are, will be able to say that should go to admin affairs and then it can come to us. That should go to academic affairs and then it should come to us. You know, So there's a little bit of traffic cop uh, that needs to be played, but again, it still makes sure that the item is heard multiple times for the public. Uh, consolidated committees under administrative affairs would be facilities. Uh, SFOC, uh, as as we run out of bond dollars, that there's no longer a bond committee requirement. Um, budget advisory committee, eco council, those would be consolidated under uh, administrative affairs. LCAP would be a subcommittee of that committee, in particular. Uh, academic affairs uh, would be curriculum, instruction, student achievement gaps, textbook adoptions, district calendar, school schedules, English learner reclassification. That's kind of their oversight area. Consolidated committees, gate pack, calendar committee. Now, it doesn't mean these issues stop getting talked about. You can have an agenda and always have these issues on that agenda. Um, but the, the need for staff time to be consumed with extra committee meetings um, is now consolidated. And the subcommittee for that would be like the DLAC committee would be a subcommittee of academic affairs, which I believe is required for certain federal grants and things like that. Um, and then... Student affairs would be student activities, fundraising, wellness, student discipline, SARB, school culture, climate, diversity, equity, and inclusion would be under student affairs, consolidating DEI, school, school climate committee, and fundraising. So again, those issues would still be talked about, but not in separate committee meetings is the idea. So um, lots there. Yeah, no, I think this is great. Um, I'm curious... 
uh, the parent advisory, the gate parent advisory committee, mm -hmm. right? I imagine that that looks very similar to like our DI parent meeting that we have. Um, so I don't, mm -hmm. those are usually informational, right? Rather than folks coming and looking at any particular, it's usually staff coming and kind of telling them like, here's what we're doing, right. like bring your concerns. Mm -hmm. um, so I wonder if that one maybe sits by either like continues mm -hmm. to sit by itself or mm -hmm. we pull in kind of other parent advisory committees into that academic affairs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, for, we're not doing a back and forth. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> otherwise I would. Yeah, I'm like, um, yeah, I, I, I don't necessarily, I don't mind that. I think okay. at all, like I, I don't, mind when there are informational sessions. Okay, got it. I, I think it's more just like when it's like, hey, we're considering this policy. What's mm -hmm. your feedback on it? That's it's more about policy direction and when it's kind of the two way. Well, and gate Go meetings ha aren't just informational. As somebody I've sat in on a, a couple of gate meetings okay. and, and there really is much more of a of a sort of robust conversation about policy needs. So there is like a presentation component mm -hmm. of it, but that's not the entire and I haven't been to the yeah, DI yeah. meeting yet. So I don't I know but I, I think that yeah. I, mm. I so just to clarify, yeah. the gate has has more to it than mm -hmm. just it, it, it. There is a presentational component, but there is conversation yeah. that has to do with policy, procedure, things like that. I don't mind if that's broken out. I, I think, but if there's policy related conversations that are impacting gate, it should be happening through academic affairs. Yeah. Well, yeah. Students on SARB uh -huh. concerns me. That's a very private matter and i don't know that that's uh, an appropriate we can talk about it more but i don't know that that's an appropriate thing i agree well, oh yeah, yeah no so it would be about the sarb process policy it would not okay. be the specific sarb committee the specific okay. sarb committee is delineated by law so yeah. it's like an it's over umbrella here's, yeah that's right umbrella. this committee's doing this committee this committee right. blah, and blah, it's blah. creating so, the, so is it a, no go ahead sure i interrupted you is it an extra meeting so underneath these umbrellas, are these groups still meeting? And then they come to this umbrella meeting to present what their committee's doing. So so in that specific situation, yes, because it's a committee that's required by law okay. for us to fulfill a process on attendance, okay. right? We need to go through, correct, Superintendent Hill? Right. Can I, can I jump? I just want to make sure I understand too. SARB is going to continue to operate how it always has. That's okay. a legal requirement. We're going to do that. DLAC is going to operate how they always have. If there are policy considerations that they want to discuss or updates, it goes to this broader code. Yeah. That's how I'm that's understanding right. it. That's correct. Okay. And since I have a mic, can I go back to LCAP? LCAP, since that, that oversees everything, I think I would just propose just keeping that separate. That is driven by instruction. It's the district goals. Finance is a component. I, I worry if it gets embedded in the, the administrator is going to change the tone and feel of it. So I think okay. we just, since it's a le another legally compliant one, we just keep our L. We have four LCAP meetings in the town hall. Just keep that structure separate. If there are poli So I guess if there's policy considerations, it may end up in the administrative mm -hmm. one. It may end up in the executive. It may end up in fine. So it could, those policy items would go to the appropriate master committees. Okay. I, I don't I don't disagree with that at all. Like I think that's a good suggestion. Where I do want to house responsibility is every year there's usually some parent group or or you know who's like, I didn't like how you put stars on the poster, right? The process. So if the, if we can house the process the LCAP process itself within one of these committees, I think that's important. <clears throat> If, if not making it a sub, I, that totally makes sense. Then how, go ahead. If we just house under academic, then. Academic. Oh, wait, you had some. No, go ahead. So I want to make sure that I'm clear too on sort of the intention of it, mm -hmm. like in general, because I, I, I obviously looked this over before. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it makes a lot of sense, but I want to make sure it's because I understand what it, the, the purpose is that right now it feels to me like all of these committees, sometimes they happen, sometimes they don't happen. It kind of goes into a black hole. Um, there isn't, a, it's all kind of very siloed. There isn't a lot of communication about it. Um, that's not with everything, but because of the the nature of, like you said, some things being established committees, some things not, et cetera. So what this allows is for us to sort of group like, like-minded committees into one place, thereby increasing the transparency. Mm -hmm increasing involvement from the different stakeholder groups and allowing board members to sort of so that 
the board drive members the agendas. drive the agendas. And then when there are things that, so the, and it's policy conversations. So it's the process conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I, it, I like it a lot. Um, that was just help. It was helpful to talk it through out loud. Yep. Okay. Um, as far as, so Dr. Hills proposed putting LCAP it's not at least nominally way. underneath academics, if it's mm -hmm. going to live under the mm -hmm. there, I would also propose moving fundraising then up to um, operational and financial or the, sorry, the administrative affairs rather than student activities, unless, unless I'm misreading how we're thinking about fundraising, right? Is this like a fundraising with Bourbon Couch and Education or is this like boosters and that kind of stuff? Yeah, I think this is boosters, student oh, okay. activities. Okay, then never mind. But I, again, like, I don't think that, I, I think like foundation relations generally, yes, would be an admin affairs yeah, kind totally. of responsibility and what that, what that process looks like, fundraising restrictions on external organizations. Yeah. So student affairs, maybe that's what it is, is that it's internal mm -hmm. fundraising and academic or um, administrative is external. Yep. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. I like okay. it when you say something that answers a question I didn't even know I had. <laughs> It's really how do it again. Oh, that worked. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are we comfortable moving forward with this model? I'm willing to give anything a try. I like okay. it. Um, so I I will move that we adopt this model for a year um, and that we come back to this at the next reorganization. If it doesn't work, we can throw it out. But, you know, start again. But um, I'll move that we adopt this for a year. Um and then uh, the next thing that we would then appoint committee coaches. So Got it. can I get a second to that? Second. Moved by myself, seconded by me, Dr. Weisberg. Uh, last one that you got uh, on certs. So, you know, yeah. Anyway, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. That motion carries 5-0. Thank you for entertaining this. Um, the other thing is, again, these will be streamed meetings. So the public can also watch these meetings um, and we can talk about agenda structures. All of that is going to be driven by board members. So I think this is going to be strong. So something I co -chairs think now. So something, before we get to co-chairs really quickly, something I think that we should talk through uh, also with Dr. Hill is um, how we convey like the streaming needs and the communication needs and because this is going to change things for staff who have also mm -hmm. we're also involved in these things so just making sure we give people time to adjust and like knowing what the needs of staff will be in order to accommodate this i think will be is yeah. very important so uh, yeah i i agree with that so if we could have like uh, about like a 60 day implementation phase you know that you know to roll this out um <laughs> with the goal of really going live with this uh, you know towards the end of this academic year, but into the beginning of next year, really kind of, yeah. and then we can work on templates for agendas, things like that. That makes it easier for everybody to take on kind of their issue area and go from there. And then organize all the logistical challenges of finding a streaming space, all of that. Okay. Or doing it via Zoom, however we're going to do that. Okay, great. Okay, co-chairs. So right now we have student affairs, uh, academic affairs and administrative affairs. So based on the number, it looks like it'll be each of us serving on two. two. Mm -hmm. Except for the board president who serves on one because we okay. chair exec. Okay. So we chair exec. So <laughs> we're doing a different committee yeah, yeah. in this process, but yeah. For sure. I mean, I don't know what the best way to go, but I know I know where my skill sets lie. Yeah, I can. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think... Um, Preferences. If I, have to, if I have to pick two, um, administrative and academic, please. For for me, academic and student. I don't understand. Um, for me, it would be student. Okay. Doctor Agakanian, you um, said student and academic. Yes, I did. Thank you. So what do we have for? Well, what would you We're, prefer? Yeah, and then we'll start you <laughs> admin, student. It'd be good to have your insight on admin just because of all the budget and. Yeah. Okay. And other, your other choice? Academic and student. Student affairs. Okay. Ms. Tabbitt? Admin and student. Admin and student. Okay, so 
we've got uh so for student we've got three it's myself uh emily and or dr weisberg and miss tabbitt again it's not you it's my mom screaming <laughs> um, um so it's it's kind of my only choice so i'm gonna presidential prerogative this okay, <laughs> and jump on student affairs um what's in that remind me what's in that category it's uh wellness student discipline culture and climate dei oh you can take me off of that okay 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 i appreciate that That's okay important one to me so <laughs> lies <laughs> terrible lies She's okay. Like, one thing. <laughs> hey, it's a big thing. I'll take the thing. I'll take what I can get. So student affairs uh, will be co-chaired by myself and Dr. Weisberg. Um, then we're going to admin. Uh, of, well, maybe we should do academic. Uh, well, admin we have two, right? We yeah, have, both we have. And Dr. Harikani and. Oh, yeah. No, Shar. I missed habit. Oh, you did say admin. Okay. Okay. I think. Um, and what's under admin again? One more. Uh, admin is yeah. facilities, employment, job classifications, and recruitment operations. Eco well, council. Yeah, that's that's most of it. So. I'd really like to stay there. Okay. I'll be there. I guess I haven't been there before since it's new, so I can't stay. Yeah. But you know, it's I, just my yeah. I, I'm torn in the sense that the Eco Council, you look, you've been working on facilities stuff for 10 years, so you have a lot of experience. Um, having said that, like, I do want to rotate and make sure others have experience in this area as well. So um, that's kind of where I'm leaning. Um, also, your board priorities, you talked a lot about curriculum work, um, safety, you know, a lot of these are, are kind of Aids curriculum based. Too. Yeah. So I would say I, I, it's your call. Um, if you two want to stick to admin, then we can do, we'll do, I, I support that. So the hard part is we have three areas and mm. yeah. not going to break up evenly. Somebody's. I'm only serving in one area. So it does break up. It does break up evenly at that point. I think we need to have one more person. Right. I was just going to look at, because you didn't. You didn't prioritize academic. So the three on academic are Abby, Emily, excuse me, Ms. Ponser, Cam Carr, uh -huh. uh, <laughs> Dr. Weisberg, and Dr. Okay. Agakanian. Um, and currently, Dr. Agakanian is on the Eco Council, which is now under admin. admin, and Ms. Tabbitt's on facilities just for some transition on this first year. Just yeah, the two of them on on the admin and then the two of you on academic, but that's just something for you all to consider. I, I think it's important to have fresh perspectives and facilities right now. I, it's not, it's not anything personal. I, I just really think that it's important that we rotate and, and give new members opportunity to weigh in. And, and that's just kind of where I'm falling. So Except what do you do then? I gave up student affairs. So there's only two other places for me to be. Well, I mean, I, and again, like you are a former teacher, so <laughs> academics is not a bad place for you to be. Right. And uh, didn't you say we picked two? Well, we picked our top two and now we're appointing through. So it, this would be, so there's not, so basically. If I gave up one, there's only two other places for me to be. Correct. So you would co-chair either academics, co-chair academics with whoever else wanted to be on academics. That's me. So somebody's going to chair two. Okay. So Who wants to I'm too? not following. Okay, so, so again, we're picking just co-chairs. I understand. So you read at what we have so far because I don't know where we are. So either. right now, student affairs, we have myself and you co-chairing that. That's me. There you go. Academic affairs, we haven't decided yet. And administrative affairs, we're discussing right now. Right now for academic. And administrative affairs, academic, Abby, uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Sponsor Kamkar, uh, Dr. Agakanian, and Ms. Tabbitt are interested. For admin. For admin. For academic, Dr. Weisberg, Sponsor Kamkar, and Ms. Tabbitt are, or Ms. Tabbitt didn't sign up for that one. So, I would say. 
No. So it's really who wants. So I, I support for admin affairs, Ms. Ponser Kamkar and Dr. Agakanian sharing this year. Co-chairing this year. Is that good, with folks? Environment. That's mm -hmm. the people council. Yep. And then that would move us to academic affairs. And that I would, Ms. Tabit, I think if you would co-chair that. Okay. And uh, who else is it, Ms. Ponser Kamkar? So to be a real pain in the butt, I'm the only board member who didn't get to choose what she wanted to do. Hold on, that's not. Okay, so right, so this is so this is the tentative list. Uh, so for student affairs, Ferguson Weisberg. For uh, uh, administrative affairs, it would be Ms. Ponser Kamkar and Dr. Aga Kanyan. And for academic affairs, it would be Ms. Ponser Kamkar and Ms. Tabit. What happened to me on this? He's not co-chairing any committees. Got it. Other ones. Wait. Hold on. I mean, you're already co-chair. You're only doing one. I'm talking about it. Dr. Weiss. No, I'm just looking at things really quickly. Oh. We the option of if someone mm -hmm. wants to, cannot, can. Yeah, it's it's challenging because of Brown Act. Yeah, two folks are always going to do one committee, right? Right, group. right. Um, I mean, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, so this year's appointments are, again, Myself and Dr. Weisberg for student affairs or academic affairs, Ms. Ponser Kamkar and Ms. Tabit, and for administrative affairs, uh, Ms. Ponser Kamkar and Dr. Aga Khani. Okay, doc, and we'll revisit this in a year. Um, and then the last thing is the board representation on committees. So we did. So. I want to go through this list and make sure that we do kind of our permanent appointments. So, is that right? somebody's going to have to do too. Yeah. Okay. Just yep. sure. Okay. So, Burbank Arts and Education Foundation. Right now, we have myself and a vacant slot. Um, who would like to do BAEF with me? I'd like. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just having experience. Dr. Agakanian and myself, any objections there? Okay, especially because you're co-chairing uh, admin affairs as well, that gives a foundation tie, so that's good. Uh, DLAC right now is Dr. Agakanian and vacant. So anybody, do you want to continue Dr. Agakanian on DLAC, as DLAC? You want anyone else? I'm down to, I would like, but- It should, it should probably be academic. Yeah, and it shouldn't align with the larger so this should be Shar. So okay. it should be Shar or Abby. I'll just Abby, would you? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Ponser. Camcar. We'll do uh, DLAC five star. Um, right now, we did a temporary appointment for Ms. Tabit and myself. I think that that should continue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Gate right now is Tabit and Weisberg. This is a, this is uh, again under the academic. So Ms. Tabit, if you would like, would you like to continue with that one with Gate? Sure. Um. I have no choice. And um, well, you could not do it. So that that's a choice. LCAP. Uh, Wait, so sorry. am I staying on gate or is it going to, should it, should it not go to somebody who's, cause that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, yeah, that's academic. So Abby, would you do yeah. gate pack? Sponsor camp and just dying at this point. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> LCAP, we agreed we're keeping that kind of broken out. Um, so, but official, I, I think board president can be kind of a default. So that way it just kind of rotates every year. Uh, Los Angeles County Committee on District Organization. Um, Doc will go ahead. <laughs> um, they meet once a month. You can do Zoom. But no, it's like to... one, one. Of, well, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's not Laxta. Laxta is different. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Um, yeah, that's, that's the next one. So, uh. Mm -hmm. On school district organization, I'll, I'll continue on that one. That one's lovely. Um, LA County School Trustees Association. So right now uh, it's Dr. Agakani and Ms. Tabit as the alternate. Um, anybody want to? I, 
I work very approximately close to that area, but I think Ms. Tyler, do you want to? Yeah, I guess that's my okay. point that I see. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Wait, no, put I'm me asking, where you need uh, to put me. That's the way it's being done. No, Let's it's continue not the way that whole not, theme. This is not, hold on, <laughs> hold on. Ms. Tabak, can you stop for a second? Yes, go ahead. I don't mean to interrupt your texting. Go ahead. This is not going to work unless we all agree for it. I'm. You're not. And I'm you not happy. I understand. I don't think that. Um, it seems, and I said it. I said it. Everybody got to choose. I backed away from something I chose so that other people could take it, and then didn't get to pick an area that I was interested in. What area so are you interested? I I picked it at the uh the whatever. Because you want to be with the, facilities. I do. I do. Right. I've been there for 10 years, but the president has other plans and other ideas. And so I, I was just the only one moving along. Said, it's okay. I, all I said was I, I, as one board member, I think it, I, I, I appreciate. Yes, I agree. Correct. And, and I think after 10 years, it's important that that other board member, because again, we're not there always going to be, be another here. board member. We're not always going to be here. There would be. Um, I get it. But, but also sometimes we need a clean break and new leadership as well. Uh, so, and, and that's all I'm saying is I, I don't think that it, I think that you have done a, a good job in facilities and through our bond process and all of it, it's, it's yeah, not it's evaluative, fine. but yeah. I am looking at, again, if you saw my priorities, my priorities are about streamlining, uh, our institutions and, and redesigning them. And I think having new faces at the helm to, to be a part of that will bring in some fresh ideas. And I don't think that's a bad thing. It's not meant to punish you. Um, I didn't take it as a punishment. I just felt that you're pouting. Unfair. So it just I'm feels like that's I'm, a reaction. I'm upset. Pouting's different. Pouting is what a child does. And I'm not a child. And I don't like that reference that you just made. Me. I am upset and angry because I didn't get to choose an area that I was interested in. And I'm now being asked to serve on a committee that is really not where my heart lies. So it's difficult to go forward doing the best job you can. Not to say that I wouldn't, because that's not who I am, but it's not of interest to me. There's many times that you've been on a committee and just blatantly failed to show up because you're just not interested. Mr. And President, it just happens. Are, sorry, so, yes. Who's the yes. second? Well, who's Hold on. The second? Can I, can I go? Hold on, hold on. Well, one of the things that I do see, and again, like, I think that one, we're still all dealing with all the things, but two, you did speak a lot about wanting to work on the curriculum piece around safety and safe driving and sportsmanship. And so th that's in academic affairs. You advocate for gate in really positive way. That's in academic affairs, school scheduling in the district calendar. I've heard you talk about that a great deal. That's in academic affairs. So again, I'm not trying to can talk you into anything, but and then, so go to the other one. I, I understand that. I understand that. But to say that you're not interested in this at all, like you, you've expressed really powerfully things in here that are. That there's are... Some, I'm not saying that there's not some areas that fine, but there's other areas in the way they've been divided up. I, I mean, we aren't, we don't, we as a board don't run different departments. Of course not. We're policymakers. We, we have things brought to us and by staff and then we vote yes or no. So I, I don't know leadership, all these words. It's a little like, what are you talking about? We have gone through uh, leadership change in that area uh, for the last 10 years since I've been on there. There never had seemed to be a strong leadership in that in facilities area, which is my, which is my major interest. Um, and it goes, uh, I, I think the problems in that area were because of the leadership at the district level. And I think that's changed and it's a positive and they're going in great direction. We've already started uh, work on um, uh, the master plan and I've been a part of that. And I think now to take me out is, doesn't make sense, especially because there's a second new person. It's not like there's two of us going back in that area. Can I just ask, can I ask a follow-up question? You can ask anything you like. Um, do you, is there? I any, am allowed sometimes to get angry. 
I didn't say you couldn't get angry. I just said that we, we can all be mad and feel all the ways, but we all have to figure out a way to work together positively. So I would never well, tell you how to feel, yeah. but I, I, I will say, well, hmm? I was just going to say like, let's, let's have this so that yeah. when we then move on to the rest of the appointments, we can do, we it. can just make yeah. the appointments not, instead of, yeah, I'm not trying in any way <laughs> to tell you not to feel the way you feel. So I apologize if that's the way it was conveyed. Is there any concern on your end? based on some of the concerns that were raised in regards to facilities over the last year about you having some favoritism towards people within facilities. I mean that I have friends in facilities? Okay. So, wait, wait, so wait. then I am being punished No, I'm, because I have friends in facilities. I'm asking you an honest question. No, I didn't assign you- I have no power. You, you guys, but, none of you do. No, I know, I but- I can't hire or fire anybody. I'm asking you if the perception- that was communicated by multiple members and facilities concerns you at all? No, it was not concerned. So if we're if we're talking about new leadership and we're talking about going in a different direction, you don't think that because those people are still there, right? That's what I'm asking you Probably about. Probably not. Um, so that's a an employment issue, which we can't. Some say. right. So I, that to me would. Be I don't know who says it, so it's hard for me to say. Right. Okay, but but if that's your concern. Fine. Well, I'm not assigned. I, I, it was a question. It was well, not a decisive. So, and I answered it. Well, and also, okay, we are not removing your expertise, but we are changing the level at which it's contributed. So it will be contributed more during board meetings than in subcommittee meetings. And I don't think that that's wrong. Like I, you still get to flavor the steak, so to speak, as it's and being I still cut. get a vote. You're right. Absolutely. So, and as we all do on all these issues, but I, I, I really care very make, strongly I about the budget. Make a mark. That for sh that that I am angry. I'll use the word angry. That I'm the only board member who doesn't get to pick the area that she feels most um, capable of, of of being a part of. Okay, I understand that, Doctor Arikanian. Thank you. Um, for those of you who know uh, some of the committees that I co-founded, I've always encouraged others to join. I think it's a healthy practice to rotate this on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. So uh, all of us not only get to listen to some of these members and what the concerns are, it's called a committee. Yep. And I also believe that, again, uh, it just helps overall, you know, when it comes to, I can't call myself an expert in any of these areas, nor should any of us. I think, yes, I believe there is a relationship, but at the same time, these are advisory committees. Mm -hmm. yeah. So rotating it, I think as long as we do it on yep. an annual basis, yep. I'm fine because next year, yep. I would like some of you to be part of the yep. some of the committees that I'm co-chairing. Mm -hmm. And I think that would just bring forward positive, uh, you know, uh, yep. move for future. I think this what's important today for me in this meeting is that we're setting, you know, procedures for the next generation, the next leadership. Yeah. So, you know, with some of the stuff that we've been talking about over and over again, I'm glad we're bringing some of them as basic as they are. But the reality of it is that also, I'll be honest with you, at one point I was kind of on the same committee and I was like, you know what? I'm not learning anything new. Yeah. And nor am I uh, <laughs> putting anything that's really helping anyone. It's the mm -hmm. same people, it's the same conversation. I'm glad that we're doing this. And and I am glad we're having this conversation, but at the same time, you okay. know, I think it's a just a good practice to set forward. Okay. So then that's great, and I hear that. But what's happening here is some people have decided that I have caused a problem. So let yes, that's exactly what you said, Doctor. No, I didn't. So okay. let's instead move things in such a way so she's no longer there. Are we, this, you want honesty. But that's that's what I'm hearing. And you don't like the honesty because it is direct. No, I don't like the honesty so, because what you're carrying over is this a decision that is made that you don't like and it becomes a personal attack. I asked you a question. I did not make a statement. I did not make an accusation. I asked you if you felt X, Y, and Z. But don't you think your question brought forth exactly exactly what you said? That it what is you a just said? So- you okay. have a concern, you, right? Because that's what your question lied to. You lied to, what's the word? Uh, directed itself to. Absolutely. So if if you foresee that 
I've created a problem, then you have decided that I don't need to be on that. I haven't decided anything. You did because I wasn't allowed to choose. Is this going to be the next year where it continues to be? When When you do this to me, it will. I'm going to stand up for myself and I don't care if you like it or not. You you should stop. We need to stop at this point because it's not, it's not being productive. You keep coming at me and I defend myself and you get upset. I never commandeered one of your meetings when you were president. Not in a public way, not like this. So I'm going to ask that we stop. And this is not personal. Okay. This is about committee. Back. You're interrupting me again. So we are going to move forward with the rest of the appointments at this time. Completely register your feelings on this. I understand. Um, but I do celebrate that you are a co chair of the Academic Affairs Committee. I hope that you will bring the same commitment that you have brought to facilities issues to academic affairs. And that we can continue more with this process today, because I just don't think this is it's leading anywhere no, right no. now. So question, but that is so as we're looking at the other committee assignments, um, uh-huh. I think mm-hmm. philosophically, do we want those to be aligned then to those committees I, or I think not? so? Okay. I think so. I would think so. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Like entirely aligned or make sure that one person who's the co-chair is on there and then potentially the person who's not a co-chair, but is on that, is serving on that subcommittee is maybe then that's their next year is that they are. Yeah. I I think where it creates issues. Not trying to split a difference. No, no, no. And I understand that (laughs) the the challenge becomes with Brown Act issues. Right. If you have a policy discussion at one subcommittee and then it gets brought to, and it happens to be with a different member. Click. That's the only challenge. So um, did you have a, nope. Okay. Um, So, Right now, we have LOXA, that's Ms. Tabit, uh, the Special Education District Advisory Committee. So that would be, I believe that's under academic. Mm-hmm. What, which one? I can't find any. Special education. But would that be consolidated or that's not statutorily required? It's uh, legally required. Yes. Okay. And I would recommend, as you said, keep it under academic. So you mm-hmm. don't have any okay. Product. So that would be Ms. Tabit and Dr. No. Mrs. Mrs. Hunter Kim. There we go. Uh, there we go. I, I default to Ms. Um, okay. SFOC will be Ms. Ponser Kimbrough and uh, Dr. Aga Kanyan. Uh, youth Leadership Program, Student Affairs. So that would be uh, myself and Dr. Weisberg. Uh, career Technical Education, that would be under Academic. So that would be Ms. Tabit and Ms. Ponzer Kamkar. And fundraising committee, and this was related to external organizations, would be under admin. So, uh, oh, the career tech was what? That's academic. But, uh, and then fundraising will be under uh, administrative. So that would be Ms. That Ponzer Kamkar and Dr. Agakanian. So that one was the Breakout. internal group. Internal ac- uh, fundraising. Okay. So, internal fundraising, as we said, student affairs. Student affairs. So that would be student affairs. So any kind of, I think, appointments moving forward, we just designate along these issue areas. Makes sense. Yeah. We're so then should uh, yeah yeah be the Burbank Arts and Ed should that be admin? Should that be Dr. Arkakani and me? Oh, me then? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That makes yep. sense. Let's do that. Oh, a lot of <laughs> yeah, there are moments where I think it's CD being board president. I'll step in, okay. but like we'll communicate around that. I appreciate. Or yeah, so actually, why don't we keep that one as you and Dr. Agakani in then? Because otherwise, you're not on. on a I just want to, yeah, I want to be able to move the foundation a lot. Like obviously, you have some ideas around that front as well, but I want to be able to work with the foundation. Okay. So yeah. great. Um, but I think in a year, if it's really just not a president thing like then I, I don't care about losing it in the same way but and, and it doesn't stop okie doke that's it so those will be the appointments just want um we'll go ahead and update the board policy review items to match those new committees perfect yep so all policy review for uh board policy will go through um these committees as well great so then Sorry, and DEI is under student affairs, right? So we said that yes. would be mm-hmm. 
And we should probably delete that one because that's now going to be topics on student affairs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Is that that's a subcommittee that's getting consolidated. So that one doesn't exist anymore. Right. Got it. Got it. Got it. It exists so, so, in a larger, more ethereal uh, sense. So even in the fundraising one, really, it's consolidated too. So that will come off the list. Right. We take the ones that are consolidated off this list. So it's clean when we adopt it. And and what I'll do is with Dr. Weisberg, we'll we'll kind of create, we'll do the work behind the scenes on kind of building this out and making it clear. So if there are questions, that's clear. I get getting agenda templates out to everybody so that they can the co-chairs can start thinking about their committees and what they want to agendize. Also prepping a letter to the organization saying this is our new governance model, this mm -hmm. is what it looks like. You know, um, the good thing is is that they will now only have to send six members in total to represent their, you know, as opposed to 30 different people on 30 yeah. different committees. So okay. um, we'll work on that letter and we'll make sure that everybody sees that before it goes out. And this is something that we'll vote on at the next meet, like the revised list we're voting on. Or are we voting on that today? We kind of just talked through that. Okay, cool. So I'm not sure what we need to like adopt. It, it, um, with the model we voted to adopt so mm -hmm. that, because that's a, a bit of a change. And so then the appointments came as a result of that model. Got it. So that, Got it. Um, but if we could get a printed out copy and redistribute the fresh copy, uh, I think that would be helpful. Well. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of moving pieces. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, with Go ahead. I do want to also make sure that, again, I like this is more impactful, but at the same time, you know, feedback from the community to any members or not, if you're not part of a committee, I think, again, just working as a team. Yep. Because I think this will bring more productivity. Mm -hmm. But also, to be honest with you, it's like the first time we've also, we were talking about committees so much. Because in yeah. the past, yeah. it's like, yeah, you, 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 and then that's good right. luck. Yeah, that's right. I like this. I think just moving forward it kind of makes it easier. And we'll see what adjustments have to be made moving forward if, if it is good in theory, but not in practice. And once again, I like the plan as well. Mm -hmm. What I don't like is I'm the only one who didn't get to choose. I'm going to say it again. I think your plan is great. I think it streamlines a lot. That is the one area that I think is unfair. I and that's my problem. I, Do you understand what my problem I is? I understood it the okay. first time you said it. Well, okay. With that, um, we've concluded our business today. Any other things, Dr. Hill? Great. With that, it is 1126. Thank you, everybody, for a great meeting. We're adjourned. Bam. I appreciate that. I'm I'm open to that, and and I I think that that's not a bad idea. We also have really good conversations with them uh, all the time. Yeah.